Hello there, very good morning to you. You're watching Sewing Street and I'm Debbie Shaw. Um, now then, first thing in the morning, we try and bring you as often as we can um, an item at a reduced price. We call it an early bird. So we've got an Ulfa cutting mat for you this morning. I'll give the details in just a second. Um, but just to let you know if there's anything that you want to order, if you want to have a look on the website, if you want to look ahead to see what we have for you in these next three live shows this morning and get ahead of the game, go to our website, which is sewingstreet.com. So you can order that way, you can have a, a perusal around the website, see what we have, or you can order on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433. If you'd like to get in touch with us this morning, um, then do come through to our Facebook page, which is Sewing Street TV. And if you go to the visitor post, I've got my page open, um, so we can answer any questions or just say hello to you. How are you? Um, what are you up to? I've, are you new to sewing? Is there anything particular you'd like to see? What, what kind of things are you making? So come and come be part of the show as well. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Um, if you have a look around our set this morning as well, you may see a couple of rogue Easter eggs. We're actually running a competition. If you can spot where they are, take note. Don't tell anybody else. And um, over the weekend, we're going to be giving a prize. Ah, so this is it. So you're going to receive two of my fabric panels and two and a half metres of fabric. So all you need to do is to send in your answers for the Spot the Egg competition, um, which we will um, we'll have uh, the draw on the 11th of April. So that's on Sunday. And if you want some more details, have a look on sewingstreet.tv. That's just for this eight o'clock hour. So if you, if you do see the, I can't think where they might be, but if you do see the eggs anywhere, um, it'll only be in this hour. We'll take them down after the end of the Hour and then they'll be somewhere else tomorrow. But let's take a look at this early bird then. So we have an A3 Alpha cutting mat. I love Alpha products. Uh, to me, they say quality. So I like an Alpha rotary cutter. I use old, uh, Alpha rulers and I use an Alpha cutting mat. Um, it's pink. It's fun, it's bright, it's A3, it's a perfect size for storage, I think. So I, I, I do have a massive cutting, but I do a lot of cutting. Um, but I think a mat of this size is, it's a storable kind of size. So if you don't have the, the, the space to leave your cutting mat out all the time, not all of us are that privileged, um, then you can put it away quite easily. So it's self-healing. So as you cut into it with your rotary cutter, um, it'll heal over any cuts that you have in there. We've got the uh, 45 degree and 60 degree marking. So that makes it easy to cut um, things like your bias binding. Um, these, this, oh, by the way, these strips are two and a half inches wide and one inch wide. So that makes it quite easy as a template to cut your um, two and a half inch strips um, for binding. And on the other side, we have centimetres. So it's metric on one side, imperial on the other. You've still got all of these markings, the 45 and 60 degrees and the two inch strips um, for, uh, for your bias binding. And it's only seven pounds and 99 pence. So it's a good size, actually. I, they, I mean, you can get a4 mats, I found they're a little bit too small, but this is the kind of size if you're folding fabric to cut through lots of layers, um, you can actually fit quite a lot on there as well. Um, so that's £7.99. That's a reduced price while we have the stock. So if you pop that in your basket now, and if I don't just pop it in your basket, if you're going to order, go through to checkout. Um, we will charge you £3.95 post. As you can see up here, it says all day. Now that means that if you come back to us later on, and you think, oh, I wanted to order some fabric, or oh, I like that pink cushion, or I'd want to try some Sashko, I've never done that before. Anything else that you order, and that's from the live shows or on the website, all the way through the day till midnight tonight, you'll still only pay that one £3.95 postage. So don't think like with a lot of other channels, you have to fill up the basket and then go through to check out, and then you'll pay your postage. With us, it's kind of a an open basket, if you we, we know that you've placed an order um, in the morning, so any time that you come back, you're not going to be charged any extra there. So again, just £7.95 for your cutting mat, and um, I think you're going to find it really useful. If you don't use a rotary cutter, ruler and mat at the moment, give it a try. We've got rotary cutters and rulers on the website, and for cutting with accuracy, you, you can't get a better cut than with these. Right, we've got some fabrics for you. So we'll pop that to one side. Oh, let's take a look at um, the pink cushions. Look at this. I like a, I like a good stabbable pink cushion, if that makes sense. I don't like a wobbly pink cushion. I like to know that when I'm sewing, because I don't always look at it, I know that it's, I, I can just stab it and it's not going to roll over. Um, so it, it may seem a little bit trivial, but I think the shape 
of a pink cushion is actually really important. This has got a nice flat base, so it's not going to roll over. And it's novel as well with a tape measure around the bottom. Um, it does have a, a pin in it, so just be aware when you get it home. Um, there may be a pin down here, um, but I just think that's loads of fun. All in the black and the white, and you can see on the base there we've got um, your marking tools and a tomato pin cushion, so very relevant printed fabric, and it's only £12.99. So that would make a fun gift idea, I think, if you, if you know somebody that sews, if you want to send them a little gift to cheer them up, or maybe it's a birthday coming, um, and it's not very heavy, so it's, you know, it's minimal postage, I think, for that one as well. So again, just £12.99. And it's a good size as well, it's not too small. So you can actually fit in. I, I like to, I do have more than one pin cushion. Um, I, I tend to have them in each room for s some reason. Um, but I'll have one with needles in and one with pins in. And then I've got one with needles and pins and then safety pins around the bottom as well. So I do like, I don't, I like to be organised. I like everything to have its place. And if I'm, if I'm a little bored, I do actually colour coordinate all of the, the colours of the pins. I, I don't, don't know why, but I do like I do like to see all the white pins together because I like glass head pins and flower head pins personally, um, but I like to group them in. That, that's a bit too organised, really, isn't it? It's like occasionally when I'm tidying um, in the wardrobe, I'll, I'll colour coordinate all of my clothes. So I've got my pink section here, and my blue section there, and my grey section. That's a that's a bit bit of a waste of time, really, isn't it? So, again, £12.99, pence. but with a pincushion you do need to be organised. You don't want pins all over the floor and you don't want them all over the table, so pincushions are an important tool in your, in your sewing room. And that's a great price as well at £12.99. I love that, I just think it's loads of fun. Okay, let's take a look at some fabrics. I'll move you out of the way. Liberty Fabrics nonetheless. And we've got a huge bundle for you. It's all of these fabrics all together and they're lovely springtime florals and they have very much that um, sketchy hand-drawn kind of look to them. So let's have, let's have take a look through here. So now the picture that you see on the website is really, really close up and these flowers look enormous. So don't, don't be misled by that. Um, they're tiny little ditzy flowers, but you can see like the, the outline, there's so much detail on these. Normally with, um, uh, the, the sign of a good printing, a uh, printer is the, the very, very fine lines. A lot of manufacturers can't get them quite so fine, but of course this is Liberty fabric. So it's exactly what you'd expect. So 100% cotton, incredibly soft, um, lovely handle on it, which is the way that it feels as well. Um, you've seen it before, but we sold out. So we've got a back in stock for you here as well. And with that whole bundle, let me just show you the sizes of these. I shan't open them all, so, but you get an idea of how much you're getting. When you go for the whole lot, they're available individually as well. Um, in effect, you're getting one free. So, £105 and pence. these would make the most amazing quilt, wouldn't they? What have you got in mind? What are you going to make? A lovely springtime quilt. Of course, if you've got some um, plain fabrics as well to blend these with, would be a, a good idea. Stretches the printed fabric a little bit further, doesn't it? Look at those roses. This is a really classic design. Very delicate. Very kind of English country garden, I think, with the roses. And again, it's got that almost like a hand-painted kind of look, like a watercolour. This one looks a little bit like a stained glass window to me. And, and don't they, the patterns go together so well? I mean, considering they're very different styles. But I think it's the colours, the, the, the same kind of colour tones running through the whole um, collection, the same palette kind of ties them all together so they really work. So there's daffodils. Look at the colours in that one. So pretty. I went to a, a Chelsea flower show a few years ago, it was amazing. I, I can't remember what time of year that is, probably not going to happen this year is it? Um, but if you're lucky enough to be able to look out into the garden maybe and see flowers coming through. It's that time of year, isn't it? Everything's budding. We've got um, 
primroses growing in the middle of the lawn for some reason. I don't know how that happened, but they just, they've just decided, it means we can't mow the lawn. Um, they just decided to pop up there. I love the colours on these as well. They're really soft tones. And I like Ditsy Little Prints as well, particularly if you're um, doing smaller items. And there's an awful lot of fabric to do smaller items with here, but if you're going to make, maybe that's what you're going to be doing while you're in. Um, EPP, maybe you're going to make a whole quilt. That's going to take a long time, so that's, that'll keep you occupied. Um, but these are the kind of um, fabrics that are ideal for smaller pieces like that. And here we go. That was almost like a chambray, just with the white flowers there. You're getting all of these. You can order them individually. I'll go through those in just a second. But you're getting the whole collection with half a metre of each. That's seven and a half metres of Liberty Fabrics in total. And remember, it is back in stock. So I love the corals in this one. Corals and peaches, there's teals and pale greens, yellows. There's a lot to mix and match within here. If you have, um, if you have any of those kind of colours in a plain fabric, so if, for instance, there's not a lot of yellow in here, but if you put yellow next to it, that yellow really pops, it'll really stand out. So it can actually kind of change the look of it a little bit. And it matches me top. <laughs> They're very delicate, aren't they? But I like, these are the kind of fabrics that put a smile on your face, I think. They're just happy colours. And flowers are always happy little things anyway, aren't they? Now, I was, um, I was listening to, uh, on the radio this morning, and they were saying that there, there's been some studies with sunflowers, and orchids were one of them, and um, snapdragons were another, and sweet peas, that if you tread on them, they can, within 48 hours, repair every single little stem that was broken and kind of rebuild itself. Amazing, aren't they? Resilience. So here we've got, um, again, more very dainty little flowers on the pale pink. That looks like a watercolour again, don't they? So pretty. And in the blues. There you go. Oh, these, um, oh gosh, what they were called, what they were called. Can't remember, my, a fuchsias. Um, my sister um, collects them. And in, in fact, there are, there are whole fuchsia societies. They're, they're really popular, there's hundreds of them. But my dad used to have a fuchsia. Um, and I used to, you know, when they, when they color out, when they come out and they're just in bud, and we used to go around popping them because they actually made a popping noise. Oh, used to get in so much trouble for doing that. <laughs> That's, it's funny though, isn't it, how certain flowers can evoke emotions or memories or take you back in time. The very first plant I ever grew was a lupin. And uh, my dad gave me some seeds and we, I had an old like, bell stuff sink in the garden. Um, that, that, that was my area, that was my part of the garden to grow things in. I can remember these lupins. But when I see them now, um, it just takes me back to when I was five years old. So what kind of memories have you got with flowers? Is it the flowers that you had in your wedding bouquet, maybe? Maybe that's nostalgic for you. Um, my grandma had um, lily, of, lily of the Valley. Are they the ones with the little bells on them? The white ones. She had some plastic ones. They were awful. But that flower always reminds me of my grandma. It's just a bit strange, isn't it? So, <laughs> so you've got lots of flowers in here. If flowers are meaningful for you, then uh, you've, you've got an awful lot of memories that are going to be springing back. So that's the whole collection. Um, so there's half a metre for free, £105.16. You've got seven and a half metres in total, but you're only paying for one metre. And all of this is what you're getting, half a metre of each one, full width of the bolt. So let me know what you're going to do with it. I'd, I'd love to know, is it going to be a quilt or are you going for them individually? Because, I mean, the perfect fabric for dressmaking as well. So it could be summer dresses or maybe making a blouse or, or a top or, yeah, some, something for the summertime, I think, with these. So, but again, have a look on the website. They are all available individually as well. So do you want to go through them individually? Do you want another look? Okay, so right back to the beginning. This is the one individual on the website that's just so zoomed in, it looks like massive flowers, but they're actually tiny. But at least it shows you the quality of the print when you have a look on the website. Um, they're £7.49, and again, that's for half a metre, so that's the amount that you're going to get. 
but because they're by the half meter if you wanted to order more um, they all come in one piece so you could easily order enough to make a really pretty summer dress maybe a strapless with a bit of shearing elastic would be nice okay so this one is um, Suffolk Fields flowers so if you're in Suffolk, is that what you're seeing when you look out of your window? <laughs> um, Colour-wise, you've got a pale peach. There's like um, a blue. Um, there's yellows and pinks and greens, but it's very, very dainty. Again, £7.49 for that one. And then next up is that classic roses. Um, but they're kind of shaded as well, so there's, although it looks quite um, almost monochrome, um, you, you've got lots and lots of shading there as well, so there's a lot of colours. And that again is £7.49. This is Liberty Ascot Rose Flowers. And that would make a very pretty little dress. If you bought the, uh, we had a, a, a book on the show the other day, it was yesterday, wasn't it? The early bird it was little girls' dresses, but um, kind of prom dresses or bridesmaids' dresses or like big ball gown dresses. And I think that would look so pretty. Now this one is the, all the daffodils. I don't think they are, are they? But yep, yeah, this, one, this one reminds me of a stained glass window. I think it's because it's got the heavier black outline around it. So this is um, Adlington Hall from Flower Show. I don't know what they are actually. They look like pansies, but I don't know what these are. Do enlighten me. <laughs> My sister's watching. She knows everything by Latin names. I don't know why. Um, so, again, we've got uh, little ditzy flowers here again, and all pastel colours. This is so pretty. This is the Wisely Flowers fabric. Is it Wisely or is it Wisley? Andrew says, can we have some dressmaking, please? Especially how to lengthen sleeves. Enjoying the shows. Thank you, Debbie. Andrew, it's on the list. Lovely fabric for dressmaking, wouldn't it? So... On to the purples and lilacs with a little bit of blue. Oh, light grey would go really well, wouldn't it? Um, because we've got the, the grey in the background there, that would look really classy. And it's kind of a, an off-white in the background, a creamy colour white, so you could do that as well. Or there's the blues, different shades of lilacs as well. They're very different styles, aren't they? But they do work so well together. This is the one I thought looked a little bit like chambray. See, I'm imagining this one with a nice white shirt. Maybe a skirt or a pair of shorts out of this one. Or a blouse. A blouse would be lovely, wouldn't it? Short sleeves. So this is um, Abbey Wood. Again, it's £7.49 for half a metre. So, there we go. Yeah, we had some dressmaking patterns on yesterday's show. There were a couple from um, So Different, Laura's patterns. They're all on the website still, if you want to have a look at some patterns. Um, we are looking at patterns at the moment with... Um, with um, I was looking at dressmaking patterns yesterday and dressmaking books as well, so they are on the agenda. Right, this is Chatsworth Blossom. I used to spend a lot of time at Chatsworth. I, um, when I'd bef I used to live in, in, in Derby before my uh, TV career um, forced a move of house. And I used to breed chickens and peacocks and ducks. I had loads of them. Had, um, my, my aviary was about 65 feet long. It was massive. But I did swaps with Chatsworth because they bred chickens as well. Um, they, they weren't fond of peacocks at Chatsworth. Um, uh, they, yes, her ladyship wasn't very fond of them, but they were donated them quite a lot because they've got so much room there. So I, I got them redonated back to me again. So I had quite a few peacocks, which were lovely. So yeah, Ch that's what Chatsworth, Chatsworth reminds me of. For my husband, it would have been all of the amazing paintings that are in there. He's quite a, a collector. Okay, moving on. 
So I've told you these fabrics, they're just uh, so many memories. They, they, they evoke something, don't they? Um, this one, just this reminds me of wildflowers. This is um, £7.49 again, they're all £7.49, and this is the Arley Gardens flowers. So we've got the, the teals in the background, and they're, they're actually, they look bright pink on my screen, I'm not sure what you're looking at at home, but these are coral, and a very pale peach colour as well. Moving on. Remember, if you ordered um, more than one, they do come in one piece. So if you wanted a metre, order two units. If you wanted two metres, order four units, and so on and so forth. And this is a Liberty Hyde Floral Flowers fabric from the Flower Show range. And again, £7.49 your price. Now this is quite, quite similar, I think, in the way and they kind of designed it. could be the same designer even. So you've got the little tiny buds there. And these again are corals. They're, they're, they're still looking a bit pinky on my screen, but they are actually a deep coral colour. And pale peaches and lemons. And then this one is another one of those really classic designs, I think. This would make a pretty top, wouldn't it? For summertime. So this is the... Emily, so if you wanted something that was a little plainer to mix and match with a busy pattern, um, and this would go with practically any of them really. Let's have a look. Very, very different styles, the one that looked like stained glass and the classic one. But look at the colours on there, that, that really, it, it works doesn't it, the two together. Let's move on. This one I think looks very modern. Um, and it still has that watercolour kind of feel to it. So this is the Malvern Meadow flowers. And again, you've got the, the greys in there as well. So that, that could be a colour that kind of dilutes the boldness, if you like. And you've got a lot of fabric, actually. If you just go for the half a metre, obviously if you're, if you're patchworking and quilting, it's going to go a long way. But just as an accent. So if you, if you don't want to order enough to make a blouse, how about just making the collar or the top of a pocket or the matching cuffs or the lining on cuffs. You see that on, on uh, men's shirts, posh men's shirts, don't you? Where the, you've got the panel down the front where the placket is and then just the lining on the cuff. So when it folds back, you see the, you see the fabric. So there's lots of uses for your fabrics. Okay, we've got a couple more still. So if you wanted to go for the whole lot, we do have the big bundle available for you. But if you just want these individually, this, this again, I think, is another um, very modern um, style. And the blues, again, with peaches. And again, £7.49 is your price there. Two more. This is the one with the fuchsias. I'm sure I'm not the only fuchsia popper. <laughs> this is the, the Marnie flowers, um, again at £7.49. pence. And then finally, we've got the blues, outlined in blue this time as well. £47.49, pence. but the blues, go with the blues. And... See, I think it's a very clever palette, the way that it's been put together, because everything just mixes together so well. So if you only want a couple, remember you only pay one P&P of £3.95. If you want to go for the whole lot, you're going to, in effect, get one free. Um, or you can order those individually as well. If you want to go for the whole bundle, um, it's £105 and £16. But remember, you're getting one of those for absolutely free. Feels lovely as well. Right, we've got more pin cushions for you. This is the B pin cushion. Uh, we've got matching bits and bobs on the website as well. So if you wanted a, um, a, the drawstring storage bag, that's available too. But I just thought we'd show you the pin cushion for now. It's only £9.99 and it's another stabbable pin cushion. I, I like a pin cushion with a flat base. Um, but this is a little bit of fun. And this has all been hand sewn as well, which is uh, quite time consuming. And it's just £9.99. So you can never have too many pin cushions, I don't think. So a little row, maybe three, a little row of them. One for needles, one for pins, one for safety pins, or one for dress pins and one for flathead pins and one for... Never have too many. Just £9.99 is your price there. 
let's take a look at our quilt as you go mug mats these are actually quite large let's take a look at the log cabin one and quilt as you go is particularly if you're just starting quilting um, this is like quilting by it is quilting by numbers you can't go wrong with it so you're going to be able to create a classic log cabin um, piece um, or a block there are three of them on the sheet your print is already on the wadding so you don't need to go out and buy any wadding for the project you will need some backing fabric though so you're literally going to cut your pieces of fabric to the sizes that it shows you and sew them on the lines it's as easy as that so you don't see the lines afterwards so don't worry about that but it gives you accuracy and it's very simple and I think for somebody that maybe is just starting to sew this is a perfect project because you're going to be able to complete all three of these within a couple of hours it's really simple your uh, points are going to be absolutely perfect and log cabin is a, a really traditional um, block for quilting so this is maybe a technique that you're going to learn that you can then go on and make a quilt out of those as well so all of your instructions are included here so you'll have the measurements that you will pre-cut your fabric um, apart from the four and a half inch square in the center all of these could be from a jelly roll they're two and a half inch strips so those are the instructions they're actually very simple and you've got the diagrams down there as well oh that's how to self bind so that's a technique that you you could use when you're making your quilt but it's a good place to start and have a practice about binding so it's basically where the backing fabric comes over the the, the top of the the front fabric and that looks like bias binding but it's actually the backing fabric so we had these on the other day and they were so popular but they're nice little projects, you know, for spending a little bit of time doing something. If you're teaching somebody how to sew or if you just joined us because, you know, I'm going to learn how to sew. I'm stuck in the house all day. I'm going to learn a new trade. I'm going to learn some new tricks. These are great projects to get yourself going with. And they're things that you can use as well. And it's just £10.99. So that's the log cabin. And... We've got another one for you as well now this one has three different designs so the first one was three log cabins but here this is all using two and a half inch strips so that could be your jelly roll or your barley pops um, or you can just cut those two and a half inch strips of course um, but these are the three different styles that you're going to be able to create so again your wadding is pre-printed so all you do is cut your strips to size and sew them on and it's like a stitch and flip if we get time we'll have a look later but you literally put it on flip it over put the next one flip it over really simple but really effective as well and again that's ten pounds and 99 pence so let's put those to one side what else should we show you um the barley pops because these go so well so we've got three choices for you let's start with the purpley ones and in fact i've got one open so this is how it's going to come to you you've got 40 strips of fabric so two of each two of each of 20 different prints so they're 44, 44 inches in length, that doesn't seem like 44. <laughs> yep, 44 inches it says. So 44 inches in length, two and a half inches wide. And look at the colours that come. So they all blend beautifully. Um, they are all 100% cotton. So they're perfect for binding. They're not cut on the bias, so not around curves, but you could easily bind a quilt with these. Um, or perfect for the projects that you've seen with the, uh, the, mug, rag, the mug rags, mug rugs. <laughs> I'll tell you what I have used these for uh, before. Um, have you seen these string bowls that you can make? So they take scraps of fabric or strips of fabric where you wrap it around a cord and then zigzag stitch in a circle and then you can build it all up into a bowl or an oval shape or a square and you can make um, jugs and put handles on them, all kinds of things. But they look amazing in these colours. I did, did that last year. So again, there's 40 strips all together. They all blend really well. You could quite easily cut these into your um, 60 degree diamonds and use them for tumbling blocks. Um, you can cut your hexagons out of them, so they're great for patchworking. Or, of course, there's John's Jelly Roll Race. If you have a look on our uh, Facebook page, it'll give you the details. So maybe this is something that you're going to, to join in there. So this one is the, the sea spotty, under the sea spotty. 
And next up is what we're calling this one, the rainbow. So put that back, let's have a look at this one. So again, they're all spotty and they're all hand dyed as well. Oh, these will be so pretty. Is this going to be a rainbow quilt to hang in your window? Do you know what would look really nice actually? If you do, you remember those um, uh, like curtain things that are just strips of fabric that you, you push your way through? A curtain just made out of strips and your window would look amazing, wouldn't it? So you, I mean, you don't even need to sew it, just hang all of the strips in your window. Put a smile on people's faces when they see it. But again, I'd love to, love to hear how you're going to use yours. So making a rainbow quilt, are you going to use these as blenders with, um, with other fabrics? Is it for borders? Lovely colours, aren't they? Yellow. They're gorgeous. And you can actually tell they're hand dyed as well. Which means that no two are going to be exactly the same. Oh, apparently they, what do they do? They put wax on. So the wax are the dots and then they're dyed. And then when the wax comes away, that's, um, that's the effect that you have. Oh, I'd love to see that being done. There must be a video of that process somewhere. So again, £39.99, there's 40 pieces in here, remember? And then finally, we've got the pastels. Which are these? Pretty colours. So pale greens, pale turquoise, sky blue. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that one. Pinks and blues, and the greens, lilacs, and yellows. So I've got some ideas for you as well. The kind of thing that you could make. Fabric strips and with the plain fabric really make them pop so you, you're not using very much of the, uh, of the actual strips at all. In fact, that's only two by the looks of it. And again, cut into your um, quarter square triangles. Really simple. Oh, look at that, that's pretty. So two ideas for you in this bag, just a panel on the plain side or, look at that, it's really effective, isn't it? And that's so simple. You're just sewing strips of fabric together. Oh, how about this one? That's from the pastel bundle. You see how they all go well together, don't they? There are um, different shades in there, so you can see like the terracotta colours really standing out at the moment. So you could arrange those to have a uh, really kind of... Um, Oh, what's the word? One, one of those effects that's like an illusion. Really pretty. So again, that's the, some, just a few ideas. Optical illusion, that's what I'm thinking of. Brain's not working properly this morning, I don't know. I don't know why. So those are all of the pastels. Again, they're £39.99. There we go. Put those down there. Right, we've still got more to show you and we've got some fabrics from uh, Lewis and Irene which are one of their most recent ranges. Um, this has got little mice. You can either go for the bundle or they're available on the website individually as well. So we've got windmills, mice and tulips on this one. This is so sweet. Lewis and Irene fabrics are gorgeous. If you haven't um, used them before or worked with them before. They're, they're just a really lovely quality of fabric. Um, what was that little song? Mice lives in a windmill in old Amsterdam. I saw a mouse. But pretty colours as well, aren't they? They're very soft. So they've kind of got an, an oatmeal-y colour in the background. And you can see like the diamond shapes with the windmill at the top of each one. And then little tulips and little mice as well. So there's two metres in the bundle altogether. You've got four half metre lengths for your £26.99. So there's windmills. Then we move on to, I love tulips. 
yellow tulips are my favourite flower. There's so many different varieties as well, aren't there? So this is um, a non-directional fabric, so it doesn't matter which way around you use it. And it's, I don't know, there's a lot of movement with the, with the leaves there, isn't it? So that would make, it would make a lovely tablecloth. Um, if you're uh, redecorating a room, so it could be a kitchen, you could do one of those little cafe curtains out of it, that would be so pretty. Uh, maybe it's um, a dining room you're thinking about, just adding a few little accent pieces. Cushion covers would be amazing made out of the, oh, this is lovely. This is like rainbow tulips. <laughs> that could be a rainbow in the window, couldn't it? <laughs> that is so pretty. So the tulips are blending from uh, red to peach to orange and they, they, they kind of blend really well as well. It's not like a, a bold stripe, it's quite subtle this one. And then <laughs> finally we have more little mice. Do you know, if somebody had said, um, I've, I've come up with this design for fabric, it's, uh, it's some flowers, it's tulips and they've got mice inside the music. <laughs> But look how that works. So you've got the, the pale blue in the background and the spots. And again, it's another non-directional fabric. Use it any way around you like. And it's got mice in flowers. Oh, and look at the selvage. We've got tulips on the selvage, um, which reflect the colours that are in there as well. That's it. I like it when um, designers do this because if you if you are colour matching, if you can never get out of the house again, um, you can just take the selvage with you um, when you go to the fabric store, and you can so you don't have to take the whole whole piece of fabric with you. But that's what would you use that for? I made um, I made a rag doll out of selvages once upon a time. I called her Selvage Sally, and uh, her hair was all selvages, and her dress was just uh, like loose selvages. So don't throw them away, particularly when you get a pretty one. There you go, so that's the bundle, so you've got um, two metres, half a metre in each one of those. But again, they are available individually if you wanted to have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com. While you're there, have a look around everything else that we have for you. Um, we're adding more and more stock of more and more items every single day, so we're hoping that is going to be your, your sewing resource, if you like. So you should be able to buy anything you like from there. We've got sewing machines, we've got overlockers, we've got fabrics, we've got tools, and we've got lots of different genres of sewing as well. So what do you do? What kind of things do you like to make? Is it quilting? Is it dressmaking? Is it homewares? Is it bag making? Are you just starting? Are you really experienced? Can we let us know? Um, if you want to go to our Facebook page, it's um, uh, Sewing a Street TV and go to the visitor post. We've got, got a few messages there already. Um, Mike says is, she's just Mike he has just bought the Elna 720 Pro. This actually came in yesterday. Um, great machine, grumbles a bit. Possibly poor thread getting stuck in the bobbin cutter. Um, 77 years old and only very recently took up sewing following loads of embroidery. Um, I've and he's put a picture there of the kind of things that he's been making. But it's lovely to hear from you and see what you've been up to and place any requests that you have as well. Um, okay, so finally in this show we've got our sausage dog pincushion. Isn't he lovely? He's a lovely little character. So it's a grey spotty fabric and he looks very smart in his scarf, I have to say. Oh, what a lovely little character he is. So again, it's, um, it's a sturdy little chap. And Oh, excuse me, gosh. I do have a problem um, putting pins in there. So I'd have him sitting on like, the side of my sewing machine or sitting on top of my sewing machine. Um, I don't think I could bring myself to stick pins in him. But he is cute. And he's only £14.99. Right, that's everything that you've seen in the show. So let's give you a reminder of the Liberty Fabric Bundle because we sold out of this last time around. So we'll have a, a quick flip through because we've spent an awful lot of time going through them individually. But if you have just joined us, it's the whole lot, the seven and a half metres in total, but you're only paying for seven. 
and they're all floral themed and they're all mix and match together so well. Can you say, it's seven and a half meters, that's going to be a rather large quilt, isn't it? If that's what you're using them for. And of course, Liberty, such a high quality of fabric, an absolute pleasure to work with. Outstanding quality, as you would expect. So this is the Flower Show Spring Fabric Collection. So there we go. Again, they're individually, uh, available individually if you have a look on the website, but we are getting quite low stocks of, uh, of a couple of them. So I shall let you know when we get to them. Those two go so well together, don't they? That was the same color pink, just blend really well. So you see, you've got lots of different kind of styles of flowers, but they, it just works so well together. So deeper colours. This one is low on stock on its own on the website. That's Chatsworth House. The purples, yellows and blues, stained glass window. That's the one that's low on stock as well. So if you wanted to go for that one, please check out your baskets as soon as possible. There we go. Oh, in fact, there's less than five meters of those remaining. Um, then we've got roses and the Ditsy print. So all of those for 105 pounds and 16 pence. There's quite a pile of fabric there. And remember that's all Liberty Fabrics. So. Oh, we've got some basting spray for you. That wasn't quite everything in the show. Um, this is quite low in stock as well. A basting spray is something that, well, it's re repositionable, but basting in the US is tacking over here. Um, so it saves you tacking. So you can use these with your, um, with your mug mats um, to secure the first piece if you wanted to. Um, but you can actually use these as your quilting. So when you've got your quilt sandwich, so you've got your top layers and your wadding and your backing fabric, you can use a spray to hold them all together so you're not pinning or you're not hand tacking. Um, there's so many more uses. It's called a quilt basting spray, um, but I use a basting spray for applique. I'll use it to um, to fuse um, fleeces and waddings that aren't fusible. So if I, want to, if I want to stick something down, maybe on the back of a cushion cover, or if I'm bag making, um, sometimes you buy things by mistake, don't you? I bought some sewing foam thinking it was fusible foam. I thought, well, I'm not gonna use it. When you put some spray on the back of it, it, um, it becomes fusible. It doesn't last forever, which is good, and it will wash out. So if you overspray, don't worry about it. It's not going to spoil your fabric. And it's been designed for use with sewing machines as well so it's not going to gunk up your needle. Um, so it's uh, 12 pounds and 49 pence. You've got quite a lot in there as well. It's, it's a big can and it's just 12 pounds 14. You'll find that really useful. That's one of those products that I would stock up on. Um, the June Taylor one particularly is, is quite difficult to get hold of. So if you wanted to go for a few of those, if we don't restrict your purchases to one per person, you can buy as many as you like if you're stocking up. So again, it's twelve pound forty nine. Yes, not not like a supermarket. I couldn't buy two tins of lentils yesterday. What? Is there a lentil shortage? <laughs> I could buy six tins of chopped tomatoes, but only one tin of lentils. And we eat a lot of lentils. Mm. So again, stock up. We don't mind. Get for as many as you like. Twelve pounds and forty nine, <laughs> or as many as, as we have the stock of, anyhow. Um, could you see? I've seen that one. Okay. Um, let's take another look at, oh yes, uh, the, our eggs. Now I wonder where the Easter eggs could be. Can't see them anywhere. We're doing a little competition. Um, so if you see the eggs, if you can spot a couple of Easter eggs, um, take note, don't share it because not everybody's going to be able to see them. It's a really difficult competition, this one. Um, so if you send in your answers, now there's going to be, we're going to move position of them throughout the eight o'clock shows in the morning. So just make a note throughout the week of where you've seen the eggs. Send in the answers to our Facebook page um, by Sunday the 11th and you could be in with a chance of winning two of my panels, my Easter panels and two and a half meters of fabric. So have a look for more details on our Facebook page, which is Sewing Street TV. And while you're there, send us a message. Be nice to hear from you. Don't know where they could be. It's not like we have a really huge set, is it? So we can, we can hide them and people really have to look for them. 
we, we, like, we like our competitions to be open to everybody, so we're not making them complicated, is my excuse. <laughs> Oh, now we've got Sashko coming up in the next hour. Um, if you've never seen that before, Cara Aikman has very kindly made a video for us and uh, she's going to be showing us the Sashko techniques. Um, and then in the third hour at 10 o'clock, no, 10 o'clock, um, we've got a sewing machine. And it's the most affordable sewing machine that we're bringing you, so perfect for a beginner sewer. So if you have a beginner sewer in your house, I'll give them a nudge. And so we're going to be doing some beginner sewing at 10 o'clock this morning. Um, talking about sewing machines, our little sewing machine pin cushion has been really popular as well. Love the shape of this and, it, and it's a nice size too. Um, that's only £12.99. Just notice the box behind here. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? I mean, easy to wrap, easy to post, just tie a bow around it. And it's got its own display case look. And of course you can use the box afterwards as well. That is only £12.99. But I was saying, you know, I like the shape of it because I, I tend to, if I'm, as I'm sewing, I don't tend to, well, I, I'm not looking at it. I just want to, to be able to stab my pin cushion and get my pins in there um, to just to make sure that they're not all over the table and ultimately all over the floor. So a pin cushion will keep you organised. Um, £12.99 your price. It's all got this um, print which is sewing themed. I don't know why there's a whisk on there though. Is it? What, what is that supposed to be? So we've got needle threaders, you've got your flower head pins, you've got your tracing wheel, an unpicker, buttons, scissors, chalks and a whisk. I'm sure you're sitting at home thinking, oh, that's not a whisk, it's a, let me know. <laughs> and again, have a look on the website for anything else. We've got lots of um, storage solutions for you there as well, so to speak. So nice little, nice little gift ideas. OK, I'm going to get ready for the Sashko show. Um, so we'll take a quick break and we'll see you again in about three minutes time. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. 
Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring your question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview Channel 74, Sky Channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back. You're watching Sewing Street and I'm Debbie Shaw and in this show we're going to be talking sash comb. If you haven't seen this before or maybe you've heard of sash comb and you think oh, that's a new skill, it's a new technique that I'd like to learn. Um, we do have a clip of uh, Cara Aikman who's going to take you through um, the skills that you're going to need and demonstration of, um, of some of the, the techniques as well. But let me give you an idea of what sash comb actually is and the kind of effects that you can create with it. This is um, the ultimate sash comb source book and you've got ideas in here not just ideas but the tools that you're going to need there's a little bit of history of Sashko as well and some really beautiful photography so this is it's, it's kind of interesting as well as um, as well as being a resource so let's take a look at some of these different designs and this is how it kind of originated so you've got your Sashko history and some really original um, antique pieces there as well so I mean this is really interesting reading you know it's like a, a coffee table book so it's not just about the projects and the techniques it's how it all evolved and how it came about and then you've got the basic techniques your threads how to use them and then some designs and some of these are very simple so if you are just starting out um, you could even just make things like greetings cards. It doesn't have to be, you know, a huge project at all. We've got some kits coming up for you later on. So if you wanted to have a look on our website on sewingstreet.com, you can take a look at everything that we have for you ahead of the game. I just warn you, we have had some sellouts really quickly last time we brought you the show. So if you do want any of the kits, I'd go and order those now. Um, but many different looks as well when you consider. So we've got curtains. Very well explained. Little drawstring bag. See how pretty that is. 
but you could use these techniques to make your own projects or just follow the instructions to make things like the table runner. The pattern library is a nice idea because that looks like a, a quilt in its own right. But these are all of the different designs, so that's um, a bit of a sampler for you. All sewn by hand, so again, no sewing machine required unless you come to the stage where you're making something up from these. So, oh, now then, if you're sewing circles, there is a little tip in Cara's demo that you're going to see later on about that. But look at the, all the different designs. So, yeah, so it's, it's something that's going to be relaxing. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a garden in this wonderful weather we're having at the moment, um, then you could take this outside. We are trying to deliver as soon as we possibly can as well. Obviously, we are restricted just like everybody else is in the situation we're in at the moment. Um, so we can't guarantee that we're going to be able to get these products out to you within a couple of days like we, we normally can. But um, we are working our very best to get things to you as quickly as we possibly can. So, oh, look at this inspiration gallery. So, you know, if you've got time on your hands what what better way than getting creative and relaxing and being productive so that is 11 pounds and 99 pence that's susan briscoe's ultimate sashko source book and um, apologies to um to susan uh, the recommended retail price is 15 pounds 99 close your ears susan and next up we have simple sashko projects for you and this is only £6.95. Sorry, Susan. It's £6.99 with an RRP of £9.99. So, again, if you're getting started, there's everything that you need to get going. And then very easy and simple project. So this may be the one to go for if you are a complete beginner. The little greetings cards again, cushion covers, but you're learning stitches and you're learning techniques so you can then adapt these to anything you want. Maybe you want to make a, a book cover or a small quilt or your cushion covers or just use part of this as a decoration maybe on a, a table runner or cover the whole thing. Um, hanging storage is a nice idea as well. And your long samplers. Whoops. So again, that's uh, Simple Sash Co by Susan Briscoe at £6.99. Right. Now, I did mention earlier on that um, Cara is going to be doing a demonstration. I have to say the coasters that she's demonstrating, we did sell out of in the last show, so we don't have those available for you now. But take a look at the video and think of it more as uh, learning the techniques and seeing how this is actually done. This is one of the, the panels that we do have available for you in different colours. So those are the, the circles. And that's, you know, it's an achievable size as well. That's something that you could easily sit down and, and complete in a day if you've got time on your hands. But again, take a look on our website on sewingstreet.com. We've got nine available for you. And uh, meanwhile, let's have a listen to Cara. She's going to introduce herself. Here she is. Hello, everyone. Oh, my goodness. This is so, so strange. Um, hello, my name's Cara Ackerman. I'm an avid stitcher. Some of you might have seen me before on another channel. Um, but hello to everybody that's new at Sewing Street. Um, this is so strange because I was supposed to be joining you on Monday and obviously with everything that's happened, um, I'm not, I'm at home. And then last night, Hayley said, mm, would you have a go at um, doing some recording at home? And I said, oh, okay, I will do. And I wasn't sure how we were going to do it and what was going to happen and whether it's any good. So I apologise now if it's not. But it's just so, so nice to be able to actually share my love of stitching with all of you. And first of all, say hi to everybody and um, especially the team at the studio. It's so, so good to be working with everybody again. And um, new faces as well. John, I can't wait to meet you. Um, so I hope it won't be too long, but most importantly, I hope you're all staying safe and well and staying indoors and stitching. I'm loving it, absolutely loving the fact that I can sit down and stitch 
and um, you know I'm not tempted to go out shopping or anything like that it's just so so nice and so therapeutic I'm sure a lot of you are finding it very th therapeutic at this time um, but anyway so what are we going to talk about today Sashko now Susan Briscoe is the queen of Sashko and I am totally in awe of her knowledge and everything that she does with Sashko. Um, but it's so, so nice to be able to bring it to a new audience and also to people who maybe have never done it before. So today we're going to actually do things like this, which is lovely, which is a placemat on a beautiful, beautiful sort of lovely bluey green fabric. And then we've got four coasters like this and I know the team at the studio will show you exactly what what's on offer and a little bit later I'm hoping to do a demo for you um, but as I say Sashko is just a beautiful um, way of stitching it originated in Japan years and years ago and it actually was used to mend garments when they were wearing out and also to um, stitch onto garments to make them a lot warmer um, in Sue's book, this one here, which is the wrong way round, I'm sorry about that, <laughs> but in um, Sue's ultimate source book there is a lot of information about the Sashko um, stitching and a lot of history and then the other book, the Simple Sashko book as well, has got lots of lovely modern projects and I think it's quite nice to take a traditional technique and actually put it into something that's quite modern. So more from Cara shortly, um, but meanwhile let me t take you through the kits that we have available for you today. Um, so we're starting off with actually a brown background, which is a little bit a little bit different. Um, you'll see the design on the front here, so that's what you're going to be able to create. So I'm not going to take these all out of the packets, because that'll probably take me the rest of the hour. But the size is the same size as this, so you're going to be able to make that design. Um, your instructions are all included as well, so there you go. We're also going to include a set of three Sashko needles and you have your Sashko thread in a crew as well for £22.99. So that's the brown matte panel kit, everything that you need to get going, you just need a pair of scissors. Then we can move on to the cream. Um, and this one has like a, a herringbone kind of effect. So that's the cream mat. Again, you're going to have the three Sashko needles and this time your thread is in the navy. The third set we have whoops, is this one. So that's your mat and there's your kit and again with the needles and with your thread in a crew for £22.99 and of course you don't have to just use these for a match you've got enough fabric for the back and the front there as well um, the designs are printed onto the fabric on all of the kits already but they will wash out so don't don't pre-wash else you won't have a pattern there anymore um, but don't worry if you don't have your stitches exactly on top of the stitch marks because the stitch marks are going to go anyway so just be aware of that Right, then we have the cream, and this again is another one that Cara has started making up here. But this could be uh, the front of a cushion cover, we're calling this one natural, sorry. Um, it could be the front of a cushion cover, it could be um, a, a panel if or a block if you're making a quilt, if you're going to go for a few of these, they're all the same size, that'd be a nice idea. And there again is your kit with your navy uh, thread, and you've got your three needles again at 22 99 Now this one we're calling... Um, Olive. Always reminds me of on the buses. Um, it's, I, I think it's more of a, a taupey kind of colour myself. Olive, it's green to me. Um, Acre thread and your three needles and this is the design so it's, I've got little crosses all over it so that's a very very simple design as a complete beginner or if a child is sewing this obviously their needles they're sharp so under supervision but that's going to be a really easy one to create because it's just crosses so it's just like doing a cross stitch and it's £22.99 again. I like the idea of, of kids learning something new and doing something different. I um, FaceTimed my eldest granddaughter last night, who was so proudly, she's only four and a half, playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on a keyboard. No! no. And then we spent about five minutes just plonking. No particular... Can you do Twinkle Twinkle again? Plonk, 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 plonk. 
So um, here we have got uh, the white and this is a set of four coasters. Um, so the size of them, this is a completely different one, this is the one we sold out, but that's the size that you're going to be able to make. Um, and there's four different designs on here as well, and the backing fabric's included too. So you've got the white fabric, remember this is a print that washes off, and there's the um, your needles, and we have the navy thread this time as well for $22.99. Over here, we have the white Liners coasters. So again, the four coasters, you can see four different designs here. Navy thread, three needles, £22.99. So again, you, you could just um, sew those together. Don't have to make coasters out of them if you don't want to. But nice quick projects as well. And having the four different techniques means that you're um, kind of learning something from those. Then we have the grey. Four coasters again. Ecru thread. Oh, that will look really nice, wouldn't it? The, the ecru on grey. Love those colours. Very classy kind of colours, aren't they? I like grey. Uh, £22.99 for everything you see there. And then finally, we have the navy. I thought we were sold out of these. Uh, £22.99. Mm. Let me double check. I thought it was the coasters that we'd sold out of. I might have got that wrong. May not have been listening at all. So those are the coasters. I shall let you know in a second if I, if I should have done a little bit more prep there. Um, and they're all different designs, but they're the same, same kind of idea as the, as the other two colours. So we've got the grey and we've got the cream. But if you went for all of them together, they're all different designs. So those are the four that we have here. I like this one, where you've got the dashed lines and as they cross over, it forms crosses. It's a nice idea, isn't it? But again, a quick, um, quick projects for you there as well. At £22.99. Right, so that's all of the kits that we may or may not have available for you. I shall let you know shortly. Um, shall we have another chat or another look at Cara? Um, she's going to demonstrate the techniques and, and show us some of the projects as well. So if you want some hints and tips on Sashko, take a look at this. Aren't these beautiful? These are two lovely projects, really, really good to get people started and ideal for beginners. So we have a mat here, um, which is really pretty and it has these beautiful circular patterns on very very easy to do and doesn't take too long we also have four coasters and you'll see they've got different patterns on them as well and um, back at the studio i know that they'll go through these particular items with you but it's just so nice to see them all together and uh, i think they'd look perfect on anybody's table so as i say you'll go through um the the packs and everything the um items that you'll need this is a beautiful, I don't know if it's come up with the colour on um, this particular recording, but it's like a denim colour and we've used white Sashko thread as well. And then the others are more traditional, so you've got the um, navy background fabric. And this is very, very much like a linen type effect. Um, I would say it's slightly thicker than the mat and it's got this gorgeous texture to it. But again, we're using the white Sashko thread and it's so effective. And these are just different patterns that you can follow on here. And as I say, back at the studio, I know that they'll go through them in more detail with you. Um, I wanted to actually take this moment as well to show you the instructions. So it's always good to have some good instructions, isn't it? And OK, they may be in Japanese, but they're very visual as well. So you can actually follow them very clearly. And when we come to the demonstration, um, I will go over certain things. Um, but if you can see that, um, there's different colours here and there's arrows and numbers. And say, for example, this particular one, this gorgeous one here, 
Um, it is telling you how to stitch, where to start. So the number one is there and you're following the pink line. And the whole thing about Sashko is to try and keep it as a continual line. So when you're stitching, you don't really want to stop and start, stop and start. You want to follow and continue a line. And it's much, much nicer when you do it like that. So this particular one, you've got the um, pink line there that you're going to follow. And there's an arrow with the direction. And you'll see this dotted line here. And this is where the thread is on the back of the fabric. And we'll go over that in a bit more detail in a moment. Um, but you'll have it as a loose thread on the back there and then you'll follow it down and come back up. And as you can see, if you continue like that, you are actually following a very, very smooth and logical line. On the next one, you'll see there's two lines. So you'll be starting again with pink. So we've got the pink line there starting at number one. You're going to be stitching over and under, over and under. And this is this particular one here. And you're going to do that first line, which is this line here. So you'll be going over and under all the way up. Then you've got the, lo the loose loop on the back and then you're going to come back down and then you'll continue loose loop on the back and then come back up the other side. For this one, you are going to have to stop and start, but that's a lovely smooth line following that that way. Then you, when you come to here, you'll stop and you'll finish off and I'll show you how to do that later. And then number two, the green line there, this is where you're going to start stitching. So you're going to start there and follow that, going along like that, long loop on the back and come back and follow that, long loop on the back and continue until you've finished. So you're actually only going to do sort of like two lines of stitching. Um, your thread may not do the whole thing, so you may have to stop and um, start with a new thread. Um, but that's really, really useful to have those sort of that sort of information on there. Um, this particular one, I love this because of the effect of the um, crosses there. And this one, you've got um, the pink line again, starting at number one. You go up the side there and come down the other side. And that's a continual line following that all the way until you finish up here. And then number two is going horizontally across from there across and back and you do the same with that and um, so these are really really useful instructions to have included on the packs and we've got the final one and again it's the same sort of method so i hope that explains a little bit more about how you follow the design actually um, using the instructions that come with the pack so moving on to the um, beautiful circular design um, I wanted to show you the instructions here and it follows the same sort of method. So we have a pink line, which you follow here, going all the way across. And then number two, you're going all the way across with the green line. And number three is the blue line. And you've got those little dotted lines as well. And that's the loops that go, appear on the back of the design. This is the particular one that I'm going to show you. So we have the gorgeous blue colour here, but we're actually going to um, demonstrate on the cream with the navy thread. So before we get started, um, I wanted to show you the thread. Now, because of the circumstances and the situation, um, I obviously haven't got the exact thread that you'll have um, been sent to you. I have a hank of the um, navy here, which is 100 metres. And this is how the 100 metres come. And obviously the one that you'll get will be a 40 metre one. So very, very similar. Um, what you'll do is you'll take the label off very carefully. And take that off. If it doesn't come off very easily, like that. Then you actually open up the hank. And you'll see that it comes up as a really, really clear full hank like that. Now, what I'm going to do is um, show you how you prepare your thread so that it makes it really, really easy to actually take a thread off at a time. You'll notice one end actually has um, is tied there with a knot. And then you'll take a pair of scissors. I'm not going to cut this yet, but you cut through that and you'll be left with just one long length of thread. And then what you'll do 
is you can either um, get somebody to hold it for you, which is really good, and then you would split that into three and then you start plaiting your thread. And this is how the thread appears once you've plaited it. It's a very, very loose plait as well and you leave the ends actually quite loose. Don't worry if they're not the same length, it's just for storing your thread together. Once you've done that, you'll be able to take one strand of the cotton thread and pull it through the actual plait. And this will come through very easily. And this means that that's a good length of thread for you to use when you're stitching. So there you go. So that's just a really, really good way to have your thread. Okay. So then we want to get started. And I want to just talk to you a little bit about the needles that are used. And we have Sashko needles, which are really good. Um, I've got a few here. I'm afraid I didn't have a pack sent from the um, studio. So I'm afraid mine might be slightly different to yours, but I've had these for a little while because I've done a few Sashko projects. That's the thing. Once you get started, you're going to get addicted. So you'll want to do other projects, I'm sure. So it's really, really useful to actually invest in the right equipment. This is a normal length of embroidery needle. I hope you can see that. And if you compare it with the length of a Sashko needle, you can see that the Sashko needle is much, much longer. And this just makes it a lot, lot easier to stitch with. Um, it makes the stitching very easy to follow and it grows very quickly because you do a number of stitches in one go. So as I say, you can use a normal embroidery needle, but they do tend to be a little bit shorter. And the Sashko needles are really good for doing a lot of stitches in one go. Um, so that's what you need to do and then you thread your needle with just a single strand of the Sashko thread and a lot of embroiderers will go oh no but you actually tie a knot in the end so you can just take an end of the thread you can turn it around like that and make a knot and you are going to have a knot on the back of your stitching so please, please, if you're a normal, traditional um, embroiderer, this is the best way to actually do your Sashko stitching. OK, so we've tied our knot and we've threaded our needle and we've actually got our pre-printed fabric. And this is a gorgeous sort of like stone colour, which is really nice. And you'll notice that the actual printing on the actual fabric is it is sort of like a pale grey, which is really nice. And I think it's really useful to actually say at this stage was that this particular printing will come off when you wash it. So please bear that in mind that it will come off when you wash it and you won't be left. So don't worry too much if your stitches don't go um, and cover the actual printing itself. So we're going to start. I've actually done some of this because I wanted to sort of show you um, you know, really how it grows and how it um, develops really as you're stitching. So I've left the two bottom lines there, which equate to these two here. So what the diagram is telling you is to start at number one. And so that's starting just there. So what I'll do is I'll just pick this up. I'm hoping this will be um, clear for everybody. This seems so, so strange, not having anybody else around. Um, I did wonder about um, having my family sat the other side of the camera and see if they would actually um, tell me if it, everything was going OK. So I really hope that you can see this and um, you're following it all right. So you start with a knot on the um, wrong side of the stitching. So there's your knot there. And you're starting at the first part of that grey printing. And then what we'll do, come up a little bit higher, is your stitches are going to be the length of the printing actually on the fabric. So your needle will go into the fabric and then you come through and you can actually pleat the fabric as you're um, working. So it's sort of more this type of move movement. So it's just a running stitch. So it's so, so simple, so easy. And it's just over and under. So we're going over the grey, then under the fabric on the back, 
over the grey under the fabric at the back. I've only done a few stitches but I'll just pull the needle through so that you can see the stitches as they grow. The secret as, as well of doing um, good sash go is not to pull the thread too tight. You don't want the fabric to pucker. So if you've not done it before, just take a little bit of time until you feel that you're getting your tension right for stitching. So we're going to go over and under again and we're following the diagram on the instructions. So over and under, over and under. And you'll see that I'm actually just pleating that fabric as I'm stitching. And this is the reason why having a longer needle is a lot, lot easier, a lot better. Hoping that you can see that. So we're going over and under, over and under. Done a few more stitches, so we'll just pull it through comes through the fabric really really easily it's 100% cotton thread and it runs nice and smoothly again you don't want to pull it too tight if it does look like the fabric's puckering a little bit then just pull the fabric over the stitches like that so we carry on under and over and you'll notice that I'm coming to a section where some stitches have already been done and what you'll do is we need to miss that particular stitch there, come over slightly, pull it through. So you are missing that stitch that's already been done. Pull it through again, just make sure it's not puckered and then continue. It's so therapeutic and it's wonderful if you're stuck at home and want something to do that you can still do and have a chat with people. It's really, really sociable because you're not having to count or um, concentrate too much. Um, you're really just sort of trying to figure out which direction to do the stitches. A couple of times I've, I've already done it when I've been chatting away and I've actually come back on the circle and I thought, no, that's not right. We want to work our way across the design. So again, I hope that's coming through quite clearly for you. And we carry on like that. And as I say, um, what's wonderful about this is, um, especially Susan Briscoe and the books that we have on offer at the moment, um, we're sort of taking Sashko to quite a modern level. It's a very, very traditional craft but we're actually suggesting that you can do lots and lots of different things with it. Play around with colour, play around with fabrics, play around with projects. And a couple of the books have got lots of um, really, really good projects for you to have a go at. Um, but also, especially in the um, main book, there are so many different patterns. And it's just lovely trying all the different patterns. So we just follow that through. Right. One thing I did want to show you was, do you remember we talked about the loop? Well, the loops are on the back of the actual design. I'll show you there and here. So they're actually at the edge and you don't want to pull your stitches very tight. You want to leave quite a loop there. So when you get to that part of the actual stitching, don't pull it tight, leave quite a loop, and it just means that the design will stitch and the stitching will stitch, sit nice and flat. Um, so that's that part there. So we'll carry on. And you can see I'm just following this line here and up, and I'll carry on all the way there and come to there. Now I will finish there and I'll show you how to finish. I know I've got some thread here on the needle but I will show you how you can finish. You want to um, secure the thread on the back so you'll actually pull the thread through. I usually pass my needle under a stitch so I've got a loop there and then do another stitch under the loop but into that section so my thread is actually knotting round like that. And you pull that through 
and that's nice and secure if you don't feel it's too much then you could do another one but i find that just one of those is good and you just cut that off and that's a really really neat way of finishing off the threads on the back and um, so i hope that that will explain to you how to do the stitching once you've done the stitching and it's all complete um, make sure that you've trimmed your design to the edge so you've got a solid line there and then there's another line and that's where you'll trim. I've actually used pinking shears on the edge of mine. So I've got this really nice and everything. So what we'll do is you press that. I normally press it onto a towel onto the reverse of the stitching. Then you'll take the other part and you will lay that on top. And I find actually laying it on top with the printed line showing is a really good way because that's where you're going to be stitching and what you'll do is you'll start somewhere like this do a couple of back stitch lines then machine to the corner needle down come across to the corner needle down come all the way round like that and you'll leave about three four inches gap when you finish do your reverse stitch again once you've done that you can trim the um, outside edge a little bit further and then what you'll do is you'll turn, clip the corners, sorry, nearly forgot that, clip the corners and then you'll turn everything through to the other side. Press it again on your towel and you'll find that the actual open section, the raw edges will fold in and you can um, hand stitch that. So hand stem that and then you're left with your beautiful mat. And that's what it will look like when it's finished in the different colour exactly the same technique is used for the coasters as well okay i hope you've enjoyed that i've really really enjoyed sharing this with you and i'm just so sorry that i haven't been able to do it in person but i hope this is the next best thing well thank you so much for joining us i hope you've enjoyed today's show and i hope it won't be too long before i um actually see you in person thank you see you soon bye bye and thank you, Cara, for making that uh, demonstration for us. Um, right, I need to take you back through some of your favourites from the kits that we have. And I'm so glad you love the grey. I'd love to see this one made up. I think the grey is a really classy colour, and particularly when it's put with the Ecru um, thread. I think they're going to look stunning when they're made up. So this is a set of four coasters. The designs are all different, and they're all different to the other coaster sets that we have as well. So you could make quite a, a sampler piece from these. Of course, you don't have to have them for coasters if you don't want to. So those are the four different designs. The size of them is going to be that big. The backing fabric's included as well. If you wanted to put some stabiliser or a little bit of wadding behind there, maybe something heat resistant if you're going to use as uh, coasters for hot drinks, then um, of course you could do. Um, so that's one of the designs. These are printed onto the fabric. And as Cara said, don't worry too much about stitching exactly onto the lines because they, the print will wash away afterwards as well. So don't pre-wash any of your fabric. So your thread and your three needles are all included for your £22.99. Then we have the natural mat. This is one that Cara started here. And you can see the way that the circles are actually sewn together. I, I would have assumed when I first saw this that you sew a circle, then a circle, then a circle. But you don't, you weave around, you snake around um, all of the different circles. So your navy thread is included here, and your needles. And there is your printed panel at £22.99. The white coasters have been popular. Uh, these are they. But again, I'd, I'd love to see these made up with maybe the navy ones um, and, and even the grey ones as well and maybe make a cushion cover out of them instead. So just join them all together instead of having individual coasters. They're all different designs, as I said previous, so these are different to the navy and to the grey ones. And this time, white fabric, navy thread and your three needles at £22.99. Then we have... The denim mat, which is this one, so that's what you're going to be able to make, which could easily be a cushion cover, you put a little zip in the side of it. And your ecru thread, and of course your needles. 
Now, if you go in for any of these kits, the coasters or this one particularly, um, the demonstration, in fact, the whole show will be on YouTube later on this afternoon. So if you just joined, you think, oh, I missed that. And I've, I've never done Sashko before and I'm not sure where to start. Make sure you get hold of your kit as soon as you can and then take a look on YouTube later on. And then that'll be there forever. So you'll always have the demonstration. Okay, this is the Navy Coasters. Three needles, a crew thread, and those are the designs that you're going to be able to make for your £22.99. And those are these, aren't they? I like that. That's such a simple idea, isn't it? But I think they're so clever, the way they overlap and form crosses. And this one. And you've got the stars. And those ones. But if you did use them all four together, you can make a nice little kind of pincushion size out of those, couldn't you? Just sew them all together like so. You do what you like with them, they don't have to be coasters. Right, we do have more kits. Um, so have a look on the website on sayingstreet.com for those. If you just wanted needles on their own, we've got those for you too. So this is the set of, so it's the same as the ones that you're getting in the kits, but just the needles on their own. So you can see the three different lengths, and as Cara was saying, these are nice long needles so you can get lots of stitches on at the same time. And they're only £3.49. Oh look, that's less than your postage. Why on earth would you pay three ninety five postage for something that's going to cost you £3.49? It's because it's the one postage all day long. So if you're adding this to an order that you've already placed this morning, or if you want to come back later on this afternoon when you've decided what else you're going to go for, we're not going to charge you any extra postage if you order on, on whatever you order before midnight tonight. All right, now we have the Sashko thread on its own, just in the crew. So if you needed extra, or you want to come up with your own designs, and that's only £4.99, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and that's again a really classic colour if you're going to use that against the blues, certainly. So it's kind of an, an off-white kind of colour. And maybe you want to embroider onto denim, that would look really good. We've got three colours of denim for you. So there's a light, the medium, the dark. This one's the medium one. It's quite wide. Now I would say a metre and a half in width and you've got half a metre in length. But it's got, it's got a nice drape, so if you're dressmaking with it, then it's, it's kind of quite soft and wearable. It's only £4.99 for a piece of that size, but if you wanted to order enough to make a shirt or a skirt or a pair of jeans, if you order more than one, they all come joined up. So, oh, a sash goes, a shash, sash, I have a problem with the letter S in the English language, a sashko skirt. <laughs> it would look amazing, wouldn't it? Maybe a bit of sashko around the pockets or something, or that if you're doing um, like the classic Western style pockets on, on the back, just a bit of sashko on there would look good. Um, this is the light version. And it's got, it hasn't got a last stain in it, but it does have a little bit of give, but it is a soft denim. So it is a very wearable denim. But um, you know, it doesn't have to be for making garments. You could be making cushion covers out of these. And I did mention the other day, I, I covered a footstool with um, English paper piece tumbling blocks in three shades of denim. And it looks amazing. And because um, your denim is so sturdy, um, I mean, I, I did that years ago. It must, it must be 10 years old and very well used and still going strong. This is the dark version. It's a little bit heavier than the other two, but it's still soft enough to be able to wear if you're going to make something out of this. We, we teamed this together with some of So Different's uh, block dresses, patterns, um, or you can make the coat out of this as well. So have a look on the website for patterns if you're, uh, if you're a dressmaker. And that again is £4.99 for half a metre. Let me give you a reminder of the books that we have for you as well. So this is Simple Sash Co. Um, eight, eight projects for you, but this, this is Susan Briscoe, but she's broken this down to just make it very easy to understand for anybody that's a, a beginner sashkoa. Is that a word? Sashkoa? A sashkoist? So what do you need to get started? Then you've got your basic um, stitches, so basic techniques. And... Ah, 
that's interesting. I was just looking at the right and the wrongs of the stitches. That makes sense. And then some simple projects for you as well. So a tote bag. And how to actually make the tote bag, it's not just a sashiko panel. Little greetings cards, that's a nice idea for a beginner. And even how to make the aperture card. You've got a cushion cover. Very simple to understand instructions as well for a beginner. Table mat. And what else have we got? Oh, and the, um, the wall hanging storage, which is a nice idea. And then we've got some long samplers as well. But I think, you know, the, the projects are, are great, um, but you're learning techniques, so then you can come up with your own projects or add your little bit of sashiko to whatever it is you're making, whether it's homewares or bags, or even with, uh, with dressmaking. There you go. So that's simple sashiko, £6.99. It has a recommended retail price of £9.99, so you've got a bit of a saving on there as well. We've got pinking shears for you in the show. These are perfect for finishing off your seams. So if, you, uh, if you're dressmaking or if you're making um, things that are going to go in the wash, so maybe cushion covers and things like that, helps to prevent your, um, your seams from fraying because these cut at tiny little 45 degree angles and you can't fray a 45 degree angle. But they're also useful for decorative work if you're working with felt, um, makes a nice kind of edge to those. And if you're um, extravagant, you can have them for paper as well if you're a paper crafter. But paper will blunt them, so I wouldn't use the same ones for a fabric as you would do with paper. So those are just £14.99 and they're actually very comfortable. Um, I find with, um, with pink shoes particularly, they, they can be really stiff to use, but these are, these, are, these are quite nice, they're comfortable on the hand. And they're only £14.99, so an important part of your sewing kit, if you're just starting sewing and you're building up a sewing kit, um, you'll need your shears, you'll need some small scissors, and you'll need some pinking shears. Pinking shears, if you're if dressmaking particularly, and if you have an unlined garment where you're going to see the seams on the inside, it's nice to finish those seams off. And this is the quickest way that you're going to be able to do that with your pinking shears. So that's, again, £14.99 is your prize. And they're nine inches in length. The length is from here until you get to where the handles are. That's, the, that's your measurement there. So standard size for pinking shears, those. Okay, anything else that you need to take a look at? If you wanted shears and scissors, we've got those on the website on sewingstreet.com, along with lots and lots of fabrics and lots of sewing goodies for you to get your hands on. If you've got any requests, put it on Facebook. If there's anything you've been looking for particularly, something that you can't find, something that you'd, maybe it's a technique that you'd like to learn, um, then come and ask the question and we shall do our best to uh, accommodate you. Because we like that. At Sewing Street. We're very nice people. So that's um, Sewing Street TV. So you can leave messages there. If you go to the visitor posts, I've got the page open now if you wanted to leave a message and have anything, um, any questions answered in the show. We can do that live. Okay, so this is all about the Sashko in this show. Um, maybe that's a new technique for you, something that you've never done before. Have a look at the YouTube um, uh, tutorial that uh, Cara did. That should be uploaded later on this afternoon, so you can really get to know the techniques and enjoy doing it. We've got Sew Machine coming up in the next hour, something that I'm thinking is going to be a perfect machine for a beginner. It's our most affordable machine. So I shall see you again just after this. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. 
every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm really excited about our Sew Along on the 18th of April. I really hope you're going to be able to join us. If you want to take part, you'll see that you'll need to buy the Design Roll Race Bundle, which is reduced by £10 by buying the three bundles together, which will be £49.97. I'm going to show you now the finished quilt to show you what it is you're going to be making. So you've got this amazing gradation of colours going through the different bundles that we have. And you can see I was lucky enough to be able to get my lovely pink strips right in the middle as whole pieces. If you want that, you keep them at 55 inches long and you then just sew them end to end and one of your rolls will appear fully in the middle. When you get your bundle, you're going to get a piece of fabric like this and you're to cut out every single strip. Cut them all out, clear the white bits off, so you'll cut the white out there, you'll cut them all into these different strips and my, my suggestion is that you keep them from light going too dark and you keep that bundle, you go, that'll be number one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 16 on each colorway. I did mine where I kept all the orange together, all the pink together and all the blue together and I sewed yellow, blue, pink, yellow, blue, pink and I started light yellow to dark yellow, dark blue to light blue, dark, uh, light pink to dark pink. You do them how you like and I also did them at 55 inches. The one I'm going to be doing on the show is I'm cutting them down in half and I'm making them to be 27 and a half roughly inches. So you can then do the same. Once you've cut them out into your strips and you've decided what length you're going to do them, which colorway you'd like to do them, then you're going to take them in each single strip. You can do them the same color, you can alternate the colors, you can change it, it's entirely up to you. You're sewing on the short end of all of your strips. So you will have a single two and a half inch tall strip of fabric which will be roughly 1700 inches. If you do want to be at the point when I'm going to be for the jelly roll, for the design roll race, sorry not a jelly roll race, what you're going to need to do, you take your raw edges of the fabric that you've got left, put them together and you sew down one side. So your 1700 inches becomes roughly 850 and I'll be going one step further before the race and then having that the, you fold the raw edges together again and sew down one of the raw edges. That will then mean that you've got four inches this way and round about 400 inches of fabric. If you want to do this, uh, take part in this, the bundle is on your screen at the moment. It's a 49.97 and we're gonna be starting this at 9.30 on the 18th of April of this year. I'm really looking forward to being able to host this with you. Any questions or queries, please drop us a line on these social media platforms and I really look forward to having you there. Thank you so much for your time, bye-bye. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday.
Hello there, welcome back to Sewing Street. Um, in this show we're going to be featuring the Elna 550. Um, it, it's a lovely little machine, it's the most affordable machine that we actually bring you, but it does have lots of tricks. It's only got 50 stitches and this is a machine that I'm afraid it gets a little bit overlooked because we do have amazing sewing machines for you that do hundreds of stitches and have many more features than this little thing. But I'm thinking if you're just starting sewing or if you've never used a computerized sewing machine before, maybe you're upgrading from an electronic sewing machine, then this is a, a fantastic entry level for you. Even though it's got 50, uh, 50 stitches, it's got the automatic buttonhole, it's got lots of feet that come with it as well, um, and it's got decorative stitches and stitches that are specifically designed for quilting. So if you're a beginner sewer, if you're just starting, if you're just upgrading, if you're coming back to sewing, if you're one of these many, many people that used to sew when you were younger and think, no, I'm going to get myself a new machine, I'm going to start all over again. Got plenty of time at the moment to learn a new trade, a new trick. Um, and uh, to be honest, if you've got an older sewing machine from those days when you used to do a lot of sewing, these modern machines are so much easier to use. They're so much quieter, they're so much smoother. You have such a vast array of stitches that you can use as well. Um, but the important thing when you buy a sewing machine, which I will bash on about every show because I do think it's important, is to buy from a big brand. When you buy a big brand, Elna, Janome, any of the other big brands, you're going to have the support and the warranties. This little machine comes with a two year warranty and there will be a helpline. Um, Elna are based in Stockport in Cheshire. Um, so they're UK based and they're very nice people. So they'll, um, they would be able to help you out if you do have any, uh, any issues or concerns. So this is the 550. The next machine up is the 560 and that doubles up the amount of stitches that we have. So um, that's 100 stitches on the 560. These other machines are available on our website on sewingstreet.com. Um, so there's all of your details for the 560, that's £519. Oh, we're getting free fabric as well with all of these machines. While we have the free fabric, you're going to get a couple of metres free. So again, that's great for a beginner sewer because you don't need to go out and buy fabrics either. And then the, um, the top of the range of this little section that we have is the 570. And the 570 has actually got 280 stitches. It comes with about £80 worth of freebies with your walking foot, your fabric and the uh, free motion foot. And that's £569. These deals are exclusive to, um, to Sewing Street. But this is the baby of the bunch. They're all, all the same size. They all come with the same feet, but this one is the most affordable. It has the least stitches, but it's still very capable of dressmaking, of beginner quilting, of bag making, of making homewares. So I'll take you through what you get with it. There is an extension table. So the accessory compartment comes off here. So you can do um, free arm sewing. So that could be sewing around collars and cuffs and um, trouser legs and things like that. If you need to sew in a circle. But you do have your extension table as well, which gives you a wider surface area for um, somewhere to rest your wrists. Or if you've got larger projects, it gives support to those. So I'll just pop that down. What I love as well is the hard cover. Not all machines come, I've got that plugged in so it won't go all the way on. Not all machines come with a hard cover. Even some of the more expensive sewing machines have a, a flimsy piece of plastic that you put over it. So I think it's nice to see the hard cover like that. So that's included. There is also the standard foot will be on the machine when you get it home. But we're also going to give you all of these, which I will take you through throughout the course of this show because we've got loads of time. So you've got a second spool. Um, this actually sits inside the bobbin winder up here. Whoops, no, it doesn't sit on the front there, sorry. Um, which means that you can twin needle sew. Um, it doesn't actually come with a twin needle, but it does have the capability. So if you, if you do have one or you need to go and buy one, you've got spare spool holders included, um, a spare set of needles and screwdrivers and everything that you expect. But you also have a blind hem foot so you can do invisible hemming on garments or on curtains and things like that to give your work a professional finish. You have a satin stitch foot so this is designed to work with the stitches where the needle goes over and over and over um, because it's raised away from the stitches it's not going to flatten them. This one is an over edge foot so that's got a little brush on the side um, to tuck in um, fraying edges on woven fabrics and the two bars down the centre help to keep your fabric flat and keep your stitches flat as you're sewing as well. 
This is a quarter inch foot with a guide on the side. Um, so the distance between where the needle penetrates the fabric and this um, guide is exactly a quarter of an inch. So that's perfect for patchworking. And then you have your zipper foot included as well. That's a lot for a basic sewing machine. You're getting a lot of extras there. So just move those out of the way without trying to be too noisy. Um, so we've got some extra bits and bobs that you might like to add to your order as well. So I've just moved this to one side for now. We'll have a, a good old tour around the sewing machine in just a second, but we've got some new things for you. So we've got some new feet and I'll show you how these work later on. So which one shall we start with? We've got quilting. We've got, well, let's start with that one. This is um, an adjustable quilting foot. So if you're using the foot on its own, the distance between the hole in the middle and the edge is exactly a quarter of an inch and it has eighth of an inch markings on there as well. But it's adjustable as in you get these two little guides with it too. One of them will give you a quarter of an inch guide, so very much like with the, um, the foot that comes with the machine, but this is adaptable. So if I clip this around here, that unscrews. Your guide clips around the screw. So I'll just turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. Screw that back on. And now you have the guide. This isn't just for um, quilters. This is ideal if you are uh, top stitching because you can use the guide around the edge of the, the, the collar or the, the bag flap, whatever it is you're making. And you know that you've got an even distance of stitches all the way around the edge. That is invaluable for a new sewer if you're top stitching to help you stitch in a straight line. Um, that could be in, you know, in a straight line or around a curve would be really useful as well. The second little guide and this one clips on. The guide actually goes into the centre of the foot. So this one is for stitching in the ditch. So the guide here will go straight along an existing seam. I'll show you this later on. And that can help you stitch in a straight line. Stitching in the ditch seems really easy because all you're doing is sewing over a seam that's already there. Um, so for instance, let me just show you really quickly. On something like this, it would be sewing over the seam here. And it seems like nothing easier in the world to just sew over there, but it can be very difficult because if you get a wobbly line, it's really going to stand out. So your stitch in the ditch foot has the guide here that you can put right up against the seam. So as you're sewing, you know that the needle is going to be in the correct position. Now we'll have a play with those later on. Now it says Janome on your screen and we're selling Elna. Same thing, same thing, same company. So any Janome sewing machine um, with a low shank, these feet are going to be able to fit perfectly. Okay, so that's new foot number one. New foot number two is your concealed zip foot um, or your invisible zipper foot. Um, which will fit an invisible zip later on in the show and I shall show you how that works. But basically with an invisible zip you don't have, sorry, oops, you don't have teeth per se. Oh gosh, I've got a little bit torn on the end. I do have another one. Looks like I've been chewing the end of my zip. Um, you don't see any of the coil on the outside of the zip. It's all behind here. That's the back of the zip. And to sew it, if I just uncurl the coil, you need to sew down here, right at the edge of where the coil is, so that when the zip closes, it curls over the top of the stitches. So your zipper foot helps to uncurl the coil as you're sewing. It's got two grooves in the bottom of it. Let's take this out and show you. Um, so it's got two grooves and the coil actually goes into the grooves and uncoils as you're sewing in the zip. This will all make sense when I demonstrate it. But you can see you've got those two little grooves at the side there. So as you're sewing again, that pushes it over and it just makes for a really easy zip insertion. Invisible zips are so simple to put in, but it's one of those things, particularly with a new sewer, they tend to think, oh no, I couldn't do that. I can't sew a zip in, never mind an invisible zip. I think invisible zips are easier than standard zips. And I shall show you that later with the zip that isn't chewed. 
Our third foot is a huge one. And this one is for sewing circles. So again, we'll take a look at this in more detail later on. But let me just take this out of its box. It does have a little screw with it, don't lose it. That'll be loose in the box, so just make sure you've got that. And this will fit on your Janome or Elna machines. Move that out of the way. So you need to take off your bobbin cover and this section here will sit inside the bobbin cover, like so. And then that screw that you're not to lose goes in the side of the plate there. Okay? So you don't need a special plate. Your Janome and Elna sewing machines will already have the screw in there, uh, the screw hole there for you, sorry. And they will fit here. So I suggest this, this, this type of machine, and this is the machine that it's been made for. So if you're going to order the 560, the 570, or the 550, this foot is going to fit. If you have the 720, this foot is going to fit. On the back of the packet here, there is an actual size of the bobbin cover. All right? So I'd suggest, and I hope I'm not talking out of order here, if you're a little bit concerned, I can guarantee they're going to fit these machines because I've tried them. If you have an older machine maybe, or I'm not quite sure if mine's going to fit or not, please don't open this when you get it home. Take off your bobbin cover and just make sure that it fits over here. And if it doesn't, send it back. Okay. But it will fit these and I should demonstrate that later on as well. Don't lose your bobbin cover. You only get one. Right. So that's £49. And you can sew in circles. The largest size on here is five inches, but that's only half of the circle because remember you're going around two sides. So you can actually sew a 10 inch circle and you can go all the way down to one inch. So the smallest size is a two inch circle. Circles are really difficult to sew, but not when you've got the right tools. So maybe that is a fault that you're quilting in circles. I can bubble coat. We've got extra bobbins for you. You can never have enough bobbins. I have um, my um, thread rack at home, like the one that you see at the side of us here. I've got one of those just for bobbins and I can fit probably three of those at a time. But to me, oh, threading up a bobbin is like putting petrol in your car. It's got to be done, but it's a bit of a chore, isn't it? Um, so I like to have all of these loaded and ready to go, particularly if I've got a large project on the go and I know I'm going to run out of bobbin thread. I don't want to stop halfway through the project and have to reload up the thread. So I like, I like to have lots of bobbins already threaded up, and I, I, I do in every colour you could imagine. Um, but even if you're going to fill these just with your blacks, whites and greys or your most popular colours, um, I just, you're just going to find it so much quicker. Always make sure that you've got the right bobbins for your sewing machine, the right size of bobbin for your sewing machine. So these are suitable for any Janome or any um, of the Elna sewing machines. If you don't have the right size of bobbin, it can look like you've got a tension problem. You know, I, I feel really sorry for tension. I know I mention it a lot, but it gets blamed for everything. And it's very rarely tension's fault. Poor tension. <laughs> Okay, we've got needles for you too. These are quite a new range from Janome. We've got the purple, we have the blue, and we have the super stretch. So, should we start with the purple tip? Maybe? Um, so, these are designed to help stop skipped stitches. More S's. I wonder what the language would be like if it hadn't got an S in it. But the teenagers, I, I have found, because I've had three of them in the past, um, tend to lose the letter T at some point, which, which is quite amusing. Going to a party in Nottingham. But yes, it would be interesting to see what happened if we didn't have the letter S. Probably be a lot easier to speak. Um, so effectively prevents skip stitches and... Um, it's particularly good for very thick fabric as well. So you've got a nice strong needle with these two. So again, worth, um, worth popping on your order. You can use these with stretch fabrics, you can use them with thick fabrics, but they have been designed to prevent skip stitches. Maybe that's a problem that you're having at the moment. So they're just £5.50. Then we have your super stretch. So a super stretch needle 
it's for super stretchy fabrics, but particularly if you have um, something with elastic in it, like elastane or spandex, or even if you're sewing through things like denim that have a bit of stretch. If you've got any kind of stretch in your fabric, it's got some kind of elastic in there. So, whoops, these needles are specifically designed for those. And then finally here, you have your blue tip fabric. So these have actually got um, a, quite a long groove where the fabric goes through there. Um, so th these have been designed for like, really tightly woven fabric, so very, very dense um, fabrics. Or machine embroidery. Um, so because with machine embroidery, the needle's going to go over and over and over in the same spot quite a lot. So th this will help uh, to keep your stitches nice and flat as well. And that again is just five pounds and fifty pence worth, you know, st sticking on your order, because you're always going to need needles, and you'd be amazed if if you've always used a universal needle for sewing everything, just try using the right needle for the job, and you'd be amazed what a difference it makes to the quality of your stitches. All right, so those are all the extra bits and bobs we have for you. Shall we have another look around the sewing machine? Right. So, we have a computerised sewing machine. I find computerised sewing machines so much easier to use than electronic sewing machines because when you choose a stitch on a computerised or digital sewing machine, the machine will automatically set the right stitch length and the right stitch width and the right tension for the stitch. So you don't have to adjust anything. You know you, that everything is correct without having to turn dials and without having to worry if I have to turn that dial, do I need to turn this one? Is that tension going to be right for this stitch? Do I need to alter the length? Everything's automatically set up. Everything you can override if you wanted to adjust the length and adjust the width and adjust the tension, of course. With a computerised sewing machine, the needle always stops in the right position. So you do have a needle up down position on this machine, which is this arrow here. So I can choose needle down or needle up, but when the needle's up, the tensions are released. If you have an ele electronic sewing machine and the needle stops about there, you'll have problems pulling the thread out because the tensions are still engaged. A new sewer is going to find that a bit confusing because you go to pull your work and it's like the, I've done something wrong and it's not. It's purely because the, um, the tensions are still engaged in there, which can be a little bit frustrating because every time you stop sewing, you're going to have to turn the hand wheel to get it into the right position. You tend to have more stitches on a computerised sewing machine than a mechanical and you have 50 here and they're all at the side of you. So I'll just take you through really quickly. We have straight stitches. We've got straight stitches with, that can lock themselves at each end as well. Um, we've got a long tacking stitch, which is amazing. And then we've got a quarter of an inch needle position. So the needle moves over to the left hand side. You've got a triple straight stitch, which is a good stretch stitch, but it's also good for um, a solid line. If you're hemming jeans and things like that and you want a really solid line. You have a lightning stitch, which is good for stretch fabrics as well. A zigzag stitch, which is all adjustable. A triple zigzag stitch is perfect for sewing in elastic. We'll do that later on as well, because it, it delivers two stitches in between each point, so your elastic isn't going to pull through it. We have over edge stitches. Remember I showed you earlier on the over edge foot. So this works in conjunction with stitch number eight. Um, an over edge stitch is a little bit like overlocking, but without the blade. Um, so it enables you to, um, to stop your fabric from fraying. We've got a slanted blank blanket stitch, more over edge stitches. You can do a pico design, so do like a, a frill around the edge with these. You've got a blind hem for stretch fabric, decorative uh, stitches, blind hem stitches. These are decorative again, the serpentine stitch. We've got three buttonholes. So the standard buttonhole, one with a round end and a keyhole. You'll use that number uh, 27 more than anything. These tend to be on dress, for dressmaking and the ones with the, uh, the keyhole are for thicker fabrics. So maybe it's a coat and you've got a button with a shank. So the shank goes through the keyhole end. This is a mending stitch. Um, so you can darn with it. This is for stretch fabric. You have an eyelet stitch, pico edging, perfect for applique. Um, we've got more decorative stitches here, so we've got your ladder stitch. That's a good stitch for stitching in the ditch. I showed you earlier on with the stitch in the ditch foot with the adjustable quarter of an inch foot. So the lines down the centre disappear into the seam and that's the same kind of thing. Um, you can use these for joining fabrics together. I'll show you this one later on as well. You can create a really nice handmade look with this one. These are all decorative stitches. These are the satin stitches. Remember you had the satin stitch foot. 
because they're quite thick stitches so we don't want to squash them and that's a clear foot so you can see where you're going and then more decorative stitches down here as well. So even though I'm thinking this is quite a basic machine, you have got a comprehensive range of stitches for dressmaking, for quilting, um, for decorating and of course for um, curtains and homewares as well. As you come up to here, this is your, your console. So to choose your stitches, you can go up and down in tens and you can see as I'm choosing stitches here, that's the stitch width and that's the stitch length and this is the foot that's recommended. Oh, sorry, this is the foot that's recommended. At the moment, I've got the foot pedal plugged in. If I unplug the foot pedal, that foot pedal icon disappears. So now I can use the start stop button. I shall show you that in a sec. Let's plug that in and it'll recognize that the foot pedal is here. I can adjust the stitch width and the stitch length on some stitches. If I can't, you'll have a, a chirping noise and that's the machine saying, ah, can't do that. These are the stitches that you'll use most frequently. So instead of pulling this out, you can automatically go to these and it'll go straight to those stitches. So there's your buttonhole foot, that's an over edge foot. There's your zigzag and back to your straight stitch. Over here, you've, I mean for a, for a 479 pound machine, there's so many features with it. It's amazing, isn't it? Haven't finished yet. Um, this is your speed control. I think particularly important if you're um, learning to sew, if you've got youngsters learning to sew, because you can just slow them down and stitch at a, at a more reasonable pace. Um, actually, my, my two and a half year old granddaughter is learning to sew. I know, we've got as far as putting a needle in and out of felt at the moment, but it's learning to sew. Um, and I think she would be better, obviously she's two and a half, under supervision, um, learning to sew on a machine with a speed control and start stop. Because at that age, even with the eldest granddaughter, she's four and a half, coordination is a problem. Um, so having a foot pedal and guiding fabric, it's a bit like learning to drive, isn't it? It's, it's, it's all of your body parts doing something different at the same time, a bit like that. Um, so I think this is a lot easier. So slow it right down and you've got a start stop button down here and you just press that to go and press it to stop. That's a reversing stitch, um, a reversing button. And then this is a lock stitch. So on the decorative stitches, for instance, if you want to back tack to strengthen the seam or to stop your stitches coming undone, you're going to get a straight line going backwards and forwards. By having a lock stitch, it'll give you three or four little stitches on top of each other that stop your thread from coming undone. So it's neater. This is your tension. Don't, poor tension, leave it alone. Just don't touch your tension. And on the top here, we have a presser foot pressure dial. So that increases the, the kind of the amount of squash you have on the foot. So if you're sewing through thick fabrics, you may want to lift it up a bit. If you're sewing through fine fabrics, you may want a little bit more pressure to feed it through. And you've got a needle threader at the side here. It's a drop in bobbin on the front. And it's got the little snip there to snip your thread off as well. So that's kind of your tour of the machine. Shall we see it in action? Right, I'm gonna see this. So I've got the standard foot on the machine, so we'll just do a little bit of straight stitching. So if you're having a practice, always practice on two layers of fabric, because very rarely you sew through just one layer of fabric. And any project, any machine, anybody of any level, no matter what you're making, I would always kind of do a little test piece on a spare piece of the same fabric that you're using, just to make sure your stitches are the right length and, you know, the right width and it's all looking good and your fabric isn't puckering and you're not getting thread all knotted up underneath your, your sewing machine. Got any if you have any questions, by the way, come through on that Facebook page. So if you're thinking about buying the machine, but there's something stopping you, say, oh, I'd, I need to know this before I buy it, or is it capable of doing this, that, or the other, then just come and ask the question and I shall endeavor to let you know. Right, I am going to undo the foot pedal on this one because I'm not very good at yoga. And that's way over there. So let's actually choose one of the decorative stitches. So that one of my favorites is number 34. So again, I'm just gonna go up two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to press start. And away we go. I'd like to go a bit faster. So 
So uh, let's stop there because I don't think the fabric's moving. Feed dogs up. There we go. I shall start that again. Don't think my feed dogs are up. You can drop the feed dogs on this, so I forgot to mention that earlier on. Let's do it again. Feed dogs up. Away we go. That's better. Off we go. So it's a quick machine. This isn't its fastest. There's the fastest. Or you can slow right down to one stitch at a time. So whatever you feel comfortable with. And having that feature as well of having the start stop button on the front just means that um, if, you're, if your legs don't work very well, um, like my friend Mary, um, if you're in a wheelchair, if you're not very well coordinated, if you want to sew standing up um, and you can't reach the foot pedal, you know, maybe you're at a kitchen counter or something, then I think it's quite nice to have that stop start and the speed control on the front. But look at the quality of those stitches as they come out. This would make a lovely decorative border, maybe on a, a table runner or around the hem of a skirt or the top of a pocket or a collar and revere on a shirt. I think that's so stylish. I'm just going to stop there and pull that out and show you. If I would have, if I would have stitched this out on, um, on the 720 on a 1300 pound sewing machine, you wouldn't know the difference, would you? because the quality of the stitch is so incredibly good. I like that, it's one of my favourite ones. Okay, shall we have a play? Oh, I didn't tell you there's a buttonhole foot. I forgot all about that, that's inside the accessory compartment here. Shall we do a buttonhole? And it's an adjustable one. So you, you're going to sit your button in the back and it comes with these plates as well. Now this uh, clips onto the front of the foot. If you're sewing through um, very thick fabric, um, put this, uh, this stabiliser on basically and your thick fabric goes in between those two pieces and it just helps to stabilise the fabric or a loose weave fabric so that you're not going to distort the, um, uh, the weave of the fabric when you're sewing. But we don't need it just to sew on cotton. So I just need to, to pick a button. Sorry, excuse me while I go down here again. I just tidied up my sewing box. <laughs> um, and that fits in the back. So, your button sits in the back of the foot. So that goes in here like so. And then squish it so it's held in. So the size of your buttonhole is going to be the distance between these two points here. So it's really important when you're sewing a buttonhole to pull down a little lever at the side. So these are drop on, uh, snap on feet, so that simply drops off. And this one will go on in just the same way. Just move my thread out of the way. So it just drops on like this. I'm going to take the needle down and up again, and then just bring it underneath the foot to keep it nice and tidy. Then choose a buttonhole stitch. So I've just pressed the button on the front, you know, there were shortcuts there, I've just pressed this one. And it does actually alert me on the screen to pull the, the lever down at the side. And this is it. So it's just inside here. And make sure that lever sits in between those two. You Notice know, I said that's the size of the buttonhole. The lever needs to sit in between those two because when the buttonhole foot moves, that's a sensor. And when it gets to this point, it'll turn around and go back again all by itself. So, put your fabric underneath. The buttons always start from the front and then go backwards first. So if you're lining up buttons, maybe you're putting uh, buttonholes on a shirt, um, do a test buttonhole first of all and make note of exactly where the needle is going to start. I like to do a test buttonhole and actually cut it out and then I can place it over my blouse or skirt or whatever I'm making so I can see exactly where that buttonhole is going to sit so I know it's in the right position and the right position left or right as well. If you've got a shirt and your buttonholes are all going this way, they need to be all lined up in exactly the same position. So where your buttonhole pattern is, uh, markings on the pattern can be like a long H or an I shape, just make sure that your needle starts in exactly the same point on every single one of those. So a test one's really good. So okay, so let's press start. At this point, I can go and put the kettle on. 
I can check if we've got any messages on Facebook. I could maybe... Oh, hello, Sarah. Uh, she says, morning, Debbie. Loved the sewing surgery yesterday. Thank you very much. Next one will be on the, um, the first Monday of, of May now. Month five. We were talking about May. We were talking about Christmas last week. Um, so my, my machine, while I'm just standing here chatting, has stitched a straight stitch backwards and a zigzag stitch over the top. And the reason for that is twofold. The straight stitch will strengthen the buttonhole and having the zigzags both coming in the same direction will flatten any pile on the fabric so you're not getting piles going in opposite directions. So I haven't done anything. The machine has stopped all by itself. Let's lift the needle up and snip this off. Scissors, there we go. And you have a lovely little buttonhole. So I'll just snip into the centre of the buttonhole. You need a really short pair of scissors to do this, or you can use your quick unpick and snip down the centre. And there is my perfect buttonhole, which will fit my button perfectly. Perfect every time, that is so satisfying. Um, if you get little frayed edges there, you can snip them back with a, a small pair of snips right up to the stitches, or maybe um, get hold of some fray stop and just put that around the edge to make them nice and neat. So there's buttonhole foot. We have, whoops, that's your quarter of an inch foot. We'll have a look at the new quarter of an inch foot to demonstrate that one. We have a blind hem foot. So if I just cut a piece of fabric, I'll show you how that works. You've got two blind hem stitches on this machine, so there's one for woven fabric and one for stretch fabric. Stretch fabric stitches are zigzagged, just so you know the difference. And this one has a guide in the bottom oh, on one side as well. So in you go, on you go, drop that on there. Take the thread, thread through to the back. And then with your fabric, you're going to fold that up to the length that you want and then press. So I've got a raw edge at the top there. Um, so don't have a quarter of an inch hem, you're going to need deeper than that. And then I'm going to fold over the edge of the fabric and press again. So that could be a trouser leg, it could be my pyjamas, it could be a hem on a skirt, it could be a hem on curtains. But press it like so and you're going to find this a lot easier to do. So I'll just give that a, a quick iron. With my Prim Mini Iron, which is available on the website. Right. Well, that wasn't very straight. I'll get it right. Right. So that's pressed. And then we're going to, we need to sew inside here. So if I just turn that upside down and fold it back, I need the raw edge to be tucked inside there and that's the hem that I'm going to sew along. So let's go to stitch number is it 14, it's the wrong way around, number 12. I'll try the stretch one actually just to see what it's like because it does do a little bit of a zigzag going on so be able to see that one. Um, right, so what number was that again? That was number 12. So make sure that bar that you brought down for, for your buttonhole has gone back up again. It will let you know if it's not. The bar that is in the centre, or the guide that's in the centre of the foot, needs to go along that fold. So let's slow this down and start. And you'll have a few straight stitches, and then the, the needle goes over to one side in like a zigzag stitch. You can adjust the length and the width on these as well. So again, have a play with, with a piece of scrap fabric and just make sure that everything's in the correct position. Because you can always move, uh, adjust the stitches if it's not. It's okay to me. And snip that off at the side. So there's the line of stitches that I've just made. That little zigzag stitch, if I'm stitching on jersey or stretch fabric, will allow the, the stitches to stretch without cracking. So as I fold my hem back down again, 
That's now the inside of my garment. And on the outside, you've got a row of dots. Um, they could be smaller, actually. I could have adjusted that a little bit more. But if that's in the same colour thread as your fabric or you're using an invisible thread, the idea is that you don't see those at all. So if you're wearing, um, maybe at the moment, a pair of trousers or a skirt that's been shop-bought, if you can't see the hem, just, just have a look inside and see what the stitch is, and it's probably going to look something like that. So that's your invisible hem. We have stitches to sew in elastic. So we can do a little bit of that. That was the triple zigzag stitch, remember, that has the, the stitches in between the points of a zigzag. So standard foot back on there again. That's the foot that's going to be on the machine when you get it home. Um, let's take another piece of, of my fabric. And a strip of elastic. So the easiest way to do this is to secure the end of your fabric first of all. So don't pull or stretch anything at the moment. I need to choose stitch number seven. And again, you can adjust the length and the width if you like. So I'm just going to do a few stitches to get it going. And then stop. So I'm going to stop with the needle down. And now as I'm going to sew, I'm going to pull the elastic gently. Um, your machine's going to fight back because it doesn't like things being pulled against it. So you may have to guide the fabric from the back as well, or hold on to the fabric from the back when it starts to sew. So just pull this. So as this comes out, I'm really going to stretch that now. But I don't want to interfere with the needle. I don't want the needle bending. So I'm trying to keep the fabric that's underneath the needle as flat as I can. That stitch could have been a little bit wider on this elastic. Oops. That'll do. And there your elastic's sewn in. And it's nice even gathering like that as well. So that's from the right side. Again, use the same colour um, thread as your fabric. And you've got a nice amount of stretch there as well. So you could use um, shearing elastic as well. That's another alternative. Shearing elastic won't gather quite as much as elastic does, but... Um, that goes in your bottom bobbin. But I thought we might have a play with one of the hand stitches, or the, the look of the hand stitches. So let's go back for this one. Oh, we've had a message from, oh, from Hazel. Hi, Hazel. Right, she wants to know what's in the box. What do you get with the machine? And are there spare needles and do you need to change them regularly? Uh, yes, there are spare needles. And they're around here somewhere. Oh, there they are, they're in the bag. <laughs> so in here, quickly, I did run you through these at the beginning of the show, so I'll just do this really quickly. Um, you do have these spare needles. You've got a denim needle inside there as well. So those are all included. You've got a second spool holder, so you can do twin needle sewing. You don't get a twin needle with the machine. And you've got your spool cap on there as well. You have an over edge foot. You have a blind hem foot. You have a buttonhole foot, a satin stitch foot a zipper foot, a blind hem foot, sorry, that was a quarter of an inch foot, and your smaller spool holders, and you've got three spare bobbins, I think, in here, and a screwdriver, and a lint brush, and you should have a quick unpick. I'm pretty sure you should have a quick unpick included in there as well. And, you know, I need to double check, but I am pretty sure there is a button placement foot but I'll double check on that one. That's the, that's the one with the little blue end. But you don't get thread. <laughs> it won't come threaded when you get it. You will need your own thread and you'll need your own fabric and you'll, you'll need your own ideas as well. But you do get an awful lot. Considering this is the most affordable sewing machine that we have, you, you get so much with it, don't you? And it's a lovely, quiet little machine as well. Um, OK, we're going to have a look at stitch number 46. So you may have this stitch on, um, on your machine at home. If you're, if you're not in the market for a new machine, maybe you've already got one. Um, but it looks like three dash lines, one, three dash lines, one, three dash lines and one. Um, and this gives a really nice hand stitched look. So again, if you're quilting um, or if you're patchworking or if you're uh, embellishing and decorating, it'll give the look of, um, of something that you've done by hand. And there's a couple of different things you can do with it. 
So, I'll stitch it out as it is to start with. So, what number was that again? Number 36. So, let's take my thread. Come here to the back. Put down. 36. There we go. I'm going to increase the tension slightly, just up to... Let's go up to number 6 on this one. And then press start. You are allowed to touch the tension for a few stitches. <laughs> I, I get asked more than any other, uh, two questions. How do I sew in a straight line? And the tension's not right on my machine. And it's, it, I, I say poor old tension because it's very rarely the tension that is the problem on your machine. When you think about it, all the tension's doing is regulating the speed at which the thread goes through the machine. So if you've got skipped stitches, it could be anything down from you using the wrong thread with the wrong needle or the right needle with the wrong thread. Um, it could be that you haven't actually threaded the machine properly. Um, it could even be the brand of thread that you're using. That can sometimes have an effect. So that's the stitch, which again, um, it gives a hand finished kind of look. That's really unusual. But I'm going to try this with a clear thread on the top of my machine. So, and again, you, you're allowed to touch poor old tension on this one as well. So, here's your clear thread. So, just take that one out. It could be that you put the thread in upside down, that can affect the tension. So many things. Thread could have got caught somewhere on the way down. I need the bigger spool holder for this one. The spool holder can make a difference to tension because if it's too small, then your thread could be coming off too quickly. Do you know, that works better upright. That doesn't go upright. Does that one go upright? I'm gonna stick it on there. So it's one of those, reason being, it's one of those bobbins. I think this is quite an old one, actually, I must replace it. Um, round the top and the bottom, it's, it's, it's all rough. So if I put it on coming off this way, the thread's just gonna catch on it. And I'll blame the tension. Um, so I'm just going to stick it on the bobbin winder so that it's upright. That should work better. Now clear thread, just the same as any other thread. So the same threading system. It'll still go through your needle threader. Only use this in the top of your machine, not in, in the bobbin. So let's bring the needle threader down, go across. You can't really see what I'm doing. It's like the king's new clothes because it's invisible thread. So pull that through. And take it to the back. Now I'm going to increase the stitch length to its maximum. So that's number four and I'm going to increase the tension to its maximum which is number nine. And then we'll see what happens. So ideally your thread should meet in the centre of two pieces. Oh that's a nice one. It should meet in the centre of your two pieces of fabric. Because I've increased the tension, the top thread is pulling the bottom thread through from the bottom to the top. So I wouldn't normally want to see bobbin thread on the top of my work, but with this stitch, I want to see the bobbin thread. I don't want to see the invisible thread. So that's the bobbin thread that's come through. And I don't know if you can see if I can catch the light. The gaps in between the stitches are the clear threads. Oh, I'm glad you can't see that because it's supposed to be invisible. <laughs> but that gives a nice hand stitch look, or like a, a saddle stitch if you're um, sewing around collars and things like that, or sometimes on handbags you see that as a decorative effect. So always remember to turn your tension back to from whence it came. And we'll take that clear thread back out again and put this one back in again, the right way around and re-thread. And then we'll have a look at the new feet that we have for you too. So if you have any of the Elna machines that you bought previously, these feet are gonna be fine with it. So, which one should we start with? So Elna or Janome, these are going to fit fine. Come here, thread to the back. So we've got three new feet for you. We have the circle foot, and your quarter of an inch foot, and your invisible zip. Which one do you want to see? Let's do circular, shall we? Just find my fabric. 
Remember not to lose the little screw that comes with this. So this is it, this is what it looks like. And the way that it works is you'll take off the bobbin cover, the bobbin plate here. That's the same size as this, so this is going to cover over your bobbin. And that enables the foot to sit nice and flat. And then the screw, there's a hole in the plate here and that simply screws in. Whoops, oh come here. It says simply screws in and don't lose the screw. Where are you? There you are. Always happens, doesn't it? Right, get in there. And your screwdriver is in your kit, which is Oh, I had it. Oh, there we are. That's your screwdriver. So just give that a little twist. Not too tight. I say you can't undo it, but just keep that in place. We also have, this is a pin. That is very sharp, which is why it has a guard on it. And we can slide this bar up and down until we get the size of the circle that we want. Um, so let's go down to, let's do five. So that's two and a half inches. So that should be a five inch circle. And this little thing here locks it in place. I can then put my fabric over that spike. Obviously, you'll have measured and marked exactly where you need this to be. And put the cover back on there, just in case. Go back to a straight stitch. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Let's slow this down, put my foot down, and away we go. So that's just a straight stitch, but of course you can use decorative stitches as well. Or if you have, um, if you have decorative stitches, or if you have the alphabet on your sewing machine, um, you can use those stitches as well. So let's. I'm leaving that there, and I'm just going to move this bar over and make a circle that's a little bit bigger. And let's choose a. Oh, let's, let's do, oh, what shall we do? Let's do number 48. One of the decorative stitches. Put down, there we go. So we're gonna have perfect circles. And, you know, don't touch it, there's no need to guide it. That pin's holding it in place. The stitches are coming out perfectly. And you can just keep doing concentric circles. Look at that. So remember, this will fit any Janome or Elna sewing machine of uh, uh, the modern varieties. So you need to have the um, one of these covers on your machine. So there is a guide on the back of the packet when you get it home, so don't open it first. Take your bobbin cover and place that over the top of this and make sure that it's exactly the same. Um, I've got an older machine at home that I tried to use it on and it, it wouldn't fit at all. So that needs to be exactly the same and that means that the foot's going to fit and the screw, the screw hole in the plate is going to be in exactly the right position. So if you've already bought this machine, a lot of you have bought the 570 machine, that's the one with the, all of the stitches and the alphabet and everything, this foot will fit those. That is so pretty, isn't it? So that, that could be a quilt, I could be making a placemat. Can you imagine trying to do this without the foot? And, you know, I, I think I'm pretty good at doing circles, but I couldn't get anything as perfect as this. Certainly not when you're doing rows and rows of stitches. And if you're, if you're quilting and you're doing circles all over the place, um, I think your 49 pounds is really gonna pay for itself the first time you do that quilt. I think that's so pretty. Of course, if you stop halfway around, you've got semicircles too. You could use um, maybe one of the satin stitches, which is quite solid. Um, so that's going to help prevent the fabric from, uh, from fraying. And um, just trim it down so you've got a coaster. That's so pretty. Should we try a different stitch? Because we can. Um, let's just see a zigzag. Just a basic zigzag stitch. 
Oh, 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 that's quick. That's so fast. And then look at what you've got. Isn't that lovely? Perfect circles every single time. Remember, you can go up to 10 inches across. So you, you come in 10 inches, that's kind of this big, isn't it? I love that, I love that foot. And again, at 49 pounds, that is, I think that's, I think it's worth every penny, I love that. Um, lost my screwdriver. I don't go anywhere, I don't move, and things just disappear all over the place. And I can't take that off without it, can I? That's the lid on there. There's somebody sitting at home going, it's there, it's right in front of you. Shall we do a quick invisible zip when I eventually find it? Oh, how silly is that? Definitely not there. I had it here. It's not there. It's not there. It's not on the floor. Apologies for this, I must have a spare screwdriver somewhere, so just bear with me. Ow! That was a pin. I don't have a spare screwdriver. Shall we improvise? It's bound to be right in front of me, I'll find it any second now. Come on, Andy. Don't do this at home. I've done it. I haven't found a screwdriver, but I've done it. OK, so make sure you don't lose that little screw. If I do, it'll probably be in the same place as the screwdriver. That's silly. Do you want to have a look at the invisible zip foot? I did promise we'd do an invisible zip, did I not? So let's drop this one off. This is one of the extra feet that don't come with the machine. And this is the one with the two grooves, one either side. So again, that just drops onto the machine like so. And we'll need a straight stitch, so I'm just going to press button number one to get back to straight stitch. And let me just cut a piece of fabric really quickly. I thought I had, so apologies. So we can... No, no, no. With an invisible zip, you're going to sew the zip in before you make the seam. So it's, um, it's the only time you do that. Normally, you would sew your seam and then apply the zip afterwards. But this time, we're not. We're going to do the zip first. That's the way that it works. So this is where my zip's going to go. Like so. There. And I do have a zip somewhere that, oh, bear with me while I'm down here again, that isn't all chewed up at the end. And it's bright yellow, but it doesn't really matter because you shouldn't see this when it's on the machine. So, I'm going to lay these two pieces out. And this is their invisible zip. You can tell an invisible zip normally because most of them have this teardrop shaped um, pull and you won't see the teeth from the front side here. So I find it easier to kind of plan everything out before I go into the machine, um, just so I know I've got it in the right way. So let's undo the zip. And we're going to sew this right sides together with this. So flip the whole thing over. If you're making a dress or a skirt, you've got a stopper at the end of the zip here. This is normally a seam allowance. So line the edges of the fabric up here. You're going to start sewing the zip from here. So this part will go into either your interfacing or into your, um, your waistband. And we're just going to sew down here. If you have um, a glue stick, it's quite easy just to glue this down the edge. If you are, if you need your three quarters of an inch, um, your five eighths of an inch seam allowance, mark that onto your fabric first. So you can use an air or water erasable pen to mark the seam allowance. And then the coil of your zip goes up against that seam allowance. So just really quickly, if I was going to mark this like so, that's my five eighths of an inch. Line down there. 
and the right sides together. Where are we? That side, that, that, that. So that needs to go there. That needs to go there. Doing on that side. So the coil needs to go along that line. So again, glue stick or pins if you prefer. And then when we put this under the machine, I'm going to put it under the left hand groove. Of, you know, I said there were two channels down the centre of the zip, uh, the centre of the foot. I'm going to go under the left hand groove. And just to help it get started, I'm op opening up the coil. So I'm peeling that away from the tape. And then I'm going to slow down just a little bit. I wonder if you can. That's better, isn't it? Um, let's open that up a little bit and press start. Just to get it going a bit. And you go. Come on, I think we've got caught somewhere, bear with me. Oh, I just got that caught a little bit, so I'm going to start this again. So, you see, you'll blame your tension for that, and it's not the tension. User error. Sip away that thread. Right. So that lines up there, that opens up there, and that goes in there. And then let's start again. There we go. So the channel is opening up the coil. So it's not teeth, this is a continuous coil of, um, of nylon that makes up what we normally call teeth. And it's taking the stitch really close to the coil. You'll never get down to the end of a, um, a concealed zip but we'll get as close as we can. And... Stop. Out you come. Just caught in the groove there a little bit. And then we'll take the opposite side. So again, I find it easier just to lay my fabric out so I know where I'm going. I shan't mark the seam allowance on this side. I think you've, you've got that. So that goes there, and then this time I want this part of the zip to go right sides together with this one. So I'm going to flick the whole lot over, and this is sewn down here. So this time I'm going to use the right hand groove on the zip. So just bring you back in again. So measure and mark this when you're dressmaking just to make sure that you're starting your zip insertion at the same point. So you haven't, I'm going with the foot pedal and it's not plugged in. And I'll stop the needle down. And so. So I don't have to do much guiding here because the foot's doing the work for you. I have shown you before how you can fit an invisible corset with a regular zipper foot, but this is, it just makes it so much quicker and you're so much more accurate. So let's get on as far as we can and stop. You could back tape there a little if you wanted to. And then we'll take this out. Put my standard foot back on again. And this will probably get twisted and you'll pick it up and you think, oh, what have I done there? Look, that doesn't match up at all. But it will do. You just need to untwist it. You'll need to press it and everything. But we have this. So then when I do that zip up, the zip is going to disappear. Which is why I've said the only way you should know that that's a yellow zip is because of the yellow slider at the top. So to make the seam, we're going to sew from the bottom upwards. So up to where, whoops, I've started the stitch. So move this out of the way, that's the end of the zip. This is where my seam allowance is going to be, so bend that back there and we're going to sew a straight line right up to that point and stop at the same point. Right. It's a nice lightweight little machine as well, this. If, you're, if you have to put your machine away when you finish sewing, don't have room to leave it out all the time. It's not a heavy machine to carry around. If ever we get to go to workshops and leave the house again, it's a good size as well. 
it's portable. Um, oh, and we've got a bag for you, so you probably found that on the website already. So I'm going to slow down while I just approach that seam there. Keep that nice and flat. I want to stop at exactly the point where the last stitch is start and I'll just go backwards to secure the seam and then we'll take that out. And then let's see how we're looking. So when that's pressed, you shouldn't see where the end of the zip is. And you shouldn't see the zip. And there it is. So having the right tools for the job gives you a more professional finish. And you see what I mean now, mate, that being so easy, that I think is a lot easier than fitting a standard zip. So that's one of the extra feet that comes with, uh, that doesn't come with the machine. We've got three for you. So you've got the circle foot, you've got this one, and there's the stitch in the ditch foot as well, which I think we're a bit, a bit out of time to show you that, but I think you get the idea with that one. Um, so the machine itself, this, it's a lovely machine. It's quiet, it's sturdy, it's got a two-year warranty. It's an Elna, and this is the most affordable machine that we are bringing you. And, oh, there's my screwdriver. <laughs> so if you're having a shop around, you won't find this deal. You won't find this machine because we have exclusive deals with Elna. Um, but put the price point sewing machine for £480 and see what comes up. Take into account you have 50 stitches, buttonhole stitches, automatic buttonhole stitches, um, decorative stitches, stitch in the ditch stitches, your eyelet stitch. There's a lot of stitches on this machine which are really useful. Take into account that you don't need to use the foot pedal, that's really important for a lot of people. That you have a presser foot pressure dial, that's not normally available on more affordable sewing machines. Um, and that you've got a hard cover and you have an extension table with it as well. And I don't think you're going to be finding anything of this kind of calibre at this kind of price. Seriously, it's a really lovely little machine. We do have more expensive, we do have more comprehensive sewing machines on the website. But I'm thinking with this machine, if you are learning how to sew, if this is the first machine you've ever used, it's such a simple machine to use. You're pressing buttons. Um, but it has an opportunity. It gives you the opportunity to start sewing maybe a, a quilt. I want to do a little bit of patchwork and then change your mind. I want to be a dressmaker. I want to do both. I want to make curtains, I want to make bags, I want to make cushion covers. You've got a machine that's going to be able to cope with all of those different projects, no matter what kind of avenue or sewing street you're going to walk down and whatever you decide to stop off at. Um, you've got a drop feed dog facility and you have a whole host of extra feet included with this one as well. So as a beginner sewing machine, it's a machine that you won't feel you're going to have to replace in a few months time because you've outgrown it. If you're a beginner sewer, you won't be a beginner sewer in a couple of weeks' time. And then in a couple of months' time, you'll be intermediate. Maybe in six months' time, you'll be advanced. You don't have to replace your sewing machine every time you grow with your sewing capabilities. So this is a machine that will grow with you. Have you got an old machine? Have you got a borrowed machine? Do you have a, a hand crank machine? Lovely machines, difficult to use. How many stitches does your machine have? Is it about time you had an upgrade? If you're upgrading from an electronic sewing machine, you've got a fantastic machine here to upgrade to. So have a look on the website for comparisons. We do have other machines, again, available for you. Lots of different price points. Normally, the more you pay, the more stitches are going to be included on the machine. So that's a good guideline. But for your first machine or an upgrade, you can't go wrong with this one. Um, I'm going to see you again at the weekend. John will be back with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.